All right, welcome to the Twisted Pair with Leaf and Grain. Thank you everybody for joining us. I'm Graybeard. I am Fine Ash Red. And, and I am not Graybeard or Fine Ash Red. <laughs> <laughs> then who I am, are you? You're an imposter. I am, I am David Blanco of Blanco Cigars. Pleasure to be here with you guys. We are so excited to have you on here with us. And then I, I remember when we first met you at NFG last year. And uh, you had Jara there. Jara was your rep, and she was working behind the table and hung out with you. Uh, you know, got to smoke some of your great cigars and talking with you and hearing a little bit about your story. And from that, Red and I started talking. It's like, we have got to get this guy on our show. So here you know, we are. My head's not going to be able to fit through the door by the time you're done. I, I'm, I'm telling you. So so glad to so glad to have you here. Thank you. Who's who's your who's your guest there? So this is my buddy from England who just came over this side of the pond. This is Dom. Dom uh, came over from London. Hey, guys. He uh, he came over because we have we have our annual um, uh, customer appreciation herf in a couple of weeks, and he's like, I'm not just coming for a week all the way from London from England. Yeah. Um, so no. he's going to stay for like three weeks, and uh, he's hanging out and uh, enjoying the good old U.S. of A. Well, awesome. and better weather than there is in England right now in Florida, where I'm at. So, oh, I bet, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. no, no, no doubt. I mean, we're 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 in a we're in a winter spell right now, as you can tell by my get up. I mean, it got down to like, I think I woke up this morning. It was like 38 degrees. I was like, holy crap! Yeah. It's cold. Not cool. We, we don't do cold, at least I don't do cold, unless like I have a heavy, heavy jacket, uh, beanie on, gloves. Like seriously, yesterday it was 45 and I was in a jacket, beanie, gloves, scarf. I don't, I, I like my 90. So we are going to talk about what we're smoking tonight. And this is, I'm going to um, say, like, because Great Bear and I are smoking the same thing and it's above and beyond. And it is one of the, I still have mine in the beautiful cell site. But um, I'm going to talk about this because you made this as a special tribute to um, our servicemen and the people who um, serve our country, firefighters, you know, EMS, uh, police officers, and servicemen. So, um, and the thing that I really appreciate about it is um, it's a torpedo, and I'm trying to get mine out of the, Cello here, and I'm no worries, take with it. it. And if you notice, it you has it. up at the top is what well, I just lost it because it was in the cello. It's got, I want to say it's like a little party hat, but it goes on the top, like right here, and it represents a flag that's folded. I read that, and I just thought that was like the coolest thing because um, I'm a military brat, you know, Air Force. My dad was in SACS, he, he flew in the Cold War. Uh, reconnaissance. So, uh, and I have an uncle who is a police officer, several family that are Leo's. So I just appreciate the thought. And I thought that was so cool that y'all made that to represent a flag. So I just have to get a shout out. And I wanted to show it off before. Yeah, I the presentation on this is, is beautiful. And that, if you, you can, you guys can see here, I'm sitting here, you know, cold drawing it and, and nosing, nosing the binder, nosing the, the cap and the foot and and red i'm getting some really interesting notes off of the foot of this i mean this is like it it's like that sweetness of hay it's like a sweetness of hay that just it and it's like i haven't ever smoked this this is my first time and i've been wanting to oh. smoke this one because first, um, i don't even know what the blend is i i'm not getting i'm i'm getting the the sweetness of hay but more minty more more so minty is. more minty type <laughs> notes but but on the cold draw pure chocolate yeah pure pure chocolate. Chocolate. that's what the cigar looks like if you can see on the screen there yes yeah it comes in four sizes so um and in fact like graybeard and i ordered this because we wanted to get it um, Could not find it anywhere, no. nowhere here. So we actually had to order it from a mobile lounge in Austin, and it got in like 
three hours ago. So it immediately went into the humidor because mm -hmm. we both, neither of ours, the pack didn't come with any uh, Bobita humidification pack. Two days in the mail. So it's like immediately into my 70% humidor for a couple of hours. Jeez. So well, you got it from Smokey's Mobile Lounge? Yep. Yep. Slow. So no, Smokey. I got mine from Slow Burn. I got yeah, mine from Slow, Slow, yeah, Burn. Slow Burn. Slow Burn. Slow Burn. And Waco. Okay. And, and, and Waco. Waco. I was going to say. Yeah, because we have some yeah. shops that have them over there. I was like, what do you mean you couldn't get them anywhere? They, what? They were sold out. That was the issue. They were. Yes. It was like we went to go get them yeah. and they were sold out. So it, it, that was like the problem. I and mean, I was like, you know, it's going to be a great smoke if it's sold out. So, and, and it is. smoke this this particular cigar. I mean, I, I went up to the Good Cigar and they had all of your other blends, but didn't have this one. Underground did not have this one. Nobody had this particular blend because, and we wanted to smoke this blend. And I, well, I'm I mean, glad you found it. Uh, I apologize that it was uh, so hard, a little bit difficult for you guys to find. That being said, uh, we no, are I, having I, a, I, we did I, go through a huge sale of those, obviously for. Um, this time of year, we have there's different holidays that in particular lend themselves a little bit more to this type of patriotic cigar. Of course, the Fourth of July, but more importantly, the two that uh, it's actually meant for. One it's actually meant for is Memorial Day, mm -hmm. because this yeah. is the Heroes line. The Heroes line of, of the brand is above and beyond, but it's called the Heroes line, honoring the heroes fallen fire, EMS, law enforcement, military, like she said. Um, so Memorial Day is an appropriate uh, mm -hmm. observance that people celebrate with the cigar in honor of, of the fallen. The other one is, of course, Veterans Day, which is coming up here yeah. in November. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons that uh, you might have found some of these uh, run on. And uh, we're actually going to be doing some events for Veterans Day as well. Uh, we're actually expecting another shipment before Veterans Day, praying to the cigar gods. Yeah. That we get them in because, as you know, logistics is always an issue right now in any industry, but especially it seems to be ours. Yeah. Um, but we should be able to get them in um, before that. We do have uh, one Vitola in stock right now out of the four. Okay. So <clears throat> hopefully, and we just we just ran out of those uh, two yeah. of them, and so uh, there was a, a little bit of a rush right now before the holiday, so we knew that was happening. But we will endeavor to get them back on the shelf for you guys. So. We want to so you want to talk about the blend? But before we do, sure. What, what are we pairing with? Because I mean, this Ooh. is a good pair. So what what are we pairing with? All right. Uh, so first, we need to talk about not the necessarily the tobacco, but the notes and tones of the cigar that you guys are experiencing, right. because that enables you to understand I, I, what to pair with. And there you go. Yeah. So so we'll we'll, we'll definitely get into that. You know, that's where we want to go. Because we want to know the blend and the notes of the tobacco, and but what what drink are we pairing? All right, Woodford's Reserve, Tups Rock Pumpkin Beer, Pumpkin Beer, and I'm going with uh, Davis County. Uh, this is the Davis County 96 proof. This is the uh, double barrel limited edition. All right. Nice. I, I'm just ready for Halloween. I'm just, you know. What are you dressing up as? Um, I am. I'm, I'm thinking about either Jessica. You know, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, I was gonna say you mean Jessica. I was gonna. I was thinking, but I was like, like I better not say that. Poison <laughs> Ivy, Poison Ivy, or Sally from the Nightmare Before Christmas because I have the Sally now. You know, I don't know if y'all. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have that. So. Those are my three. Who knows what I'll do? I think oh, you'll yeah. kill in any of those. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. I think you'll be fine. Thank you. So I'm I'm getting my Halloween white girl pumpkin spice thing going. So that's what I'm doing. So we were talking about the cigar. So um, I'm. It, usually it's like when you have that hay, it's kind of like the Honduras. So if you could tell us about the blend of it, if you don't mind. Sure. So you are correct. There is some Honduran tobacco in there. It is a Nicaraguan Honduran filler binder combination. Uh, the wrapper is a Habano Rosado. Um, so that's also from Nicaragua. So it is strictly a Honduran Nicaraguan filler binder combination. It is straight medium body. Uh, we did that because we wanted to create a cigar that obviously we could raise funds with. 
um, and Ooh. not put off any particular smoking segment population because this is all about for the masses, right? One way that we raise money and we were able to go commercially with this is that uh, we want it to be right in that large dome of the smoking bell curve awesome. view. So we didn't want it too mild that somebody that's sophisticated and smokes often as an avid smoker would be bored with it. But at the same time, we wouldn't want it too full body that the novice or somebody who mm -hmm. was just getting into cigar smoking couldn't enjoy it either. So we went right straight in the middle, which was the center mass, as we say in the military. And that is exactly where we landed with that cigar. Uh, it was rated by Cigar and Spirits Magazine. We received a 91 rating. Uh, we only intended on distributing this cigar in the United States for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. because it's geeked out with the American flag and all this patriotic stuff and everything else. Mm -hmm. However, what it turned out happening is that once we released it, uh, my distributors overseas uh, found out about it, and they wanted it. Uh, they, okay. they they heard the story, which I'd be more than happy to share with you guys about in depth about what everything means. There's a lot of symbolism, oh, um, the personal that. meaning behind it. And once they heard that, they were like, you know what? We want this cigar. We we relate to the story of this cigar and what its purpose and what it was meant for, uh, and what what we were trying to do with it, despite the fact that it had the United States flag on it, because they all had. Right. Firefighters, paramedics, yeah. Yeah. Military, military guys, law enforcement, they all they yeah, all yeah. were yeah. able to relate to that. And so it didn't matter it. that it had the American flag on it. They understood what it was about and they supported it. And so now we sell it in Europe in a number that of countries. That is very cool. That is very awesome. And, and never had intended to do so. The retro hell is like it's like so unique. I haven't had a retro hell like this. It's like the sweetness with the pepper. And I am yeah. loving it. Like I could seriously probably retro hell this sounds so bad, this whole cigar, because it's not like, you know, sometimes when you get that Nicaraguan peppery and it burns the snot, literally. The wasabi, you, the wasabi feel. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It's, yes. It's, but, but you're, you're right. It's, I, floral. I, it, it's, it's, it's very, it's very floral with just a very subtle white pepper on the retro. But but that chocolatey and so when you, when you said Habano, I was just like, bam, yep, there it is. That's that's a chocolate Nicaraguan. So I, I'm thinking that that's from Jalapa. It is very good. I was about to say it, but you beat me to it. From Jalapa, very good, sir. Now, you now know your you tobaccos. Know. Did did you so, did you say what the wrapper was? And and I missed it. No, I just said Habano uh, Rosado. I didn't say where it was from in Nicaragua. Okay, but that's so, a shade grown yeah. from Esteli. Yes. Okay. And so I know that um, you are former military, correct? And your father also served. You are also um, a deputy sheriff, and you also were a firefighter. Correct. Fire paramedic. Yes. 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 So okay, I okay paramedic. So I wore all those hats that I am symbolizing in here, which is why mm -hmm. we did that. I wanted yeah. to make sure. For me, it was very personal. My father also wore all those hats. Oh, okay. um, my uncle wore all those hats. And so we wanted to honor those that we knew personally in all of those uniforms that sacrificed and gave their life um, as, as a fire paramedic or as a firefighter, as a police officer. And definitely, I know too many of them in the military. And so as our way of honoring all of them, regardless of the uniform uh, and a way to give back, uh, because we donate a portion of the proceeds to 501c3s such as Tunnels to Towers um, to help the remaining family members and survivors uh, after the loss of a oh, loved one. So awesome. this was our way to give back um, mm -hmm. with the cigar as well as honoring them more than just lip service, uh, but also to give back uh, in a meaningful way. Um, so that's why we wanted this cigar to be very successful. Um, and we wanted to make sure the profile was one or such that everybody or as many people could enjoy it as possible. So it was very uh, difficult for me to blend something for the masses because it's not generally how I blend cigars. I'm a, I'm a blender. I've been blending for almost 25 years. Uh, I've been dubbed and I say dubbed because it's not for me to call myself a master blender. It's for my peers to bestow that title upon me. I call myself a blender, but master is bestowed on those that feel your work is worth that title. Mm -hmm. So I, many people call me that. I consider myself a blender because I know many people better than I, in my opinion, <laughs> that, are, that I would call masters, but I'm honored that people call me 
a master yeah. blender and residency at the Placencia factory because I, I do all of my work. I've worked there for almost 25 years uh, as a blender, uh, making not only the six or seven brands that I own, but I manufacture 12 other company cigars there. So I am a blender for them as well. Um, so for me, it is a labor of love and passion. And uh, it's a long story how I got in this business. I was the first one of my family born here in the United States. Uh, my family is Cuban, uh, which is the heritage and legacy that I carry on as the fifth generation in the family in the industry. I didn't want it to die with my father when he left Cuba. So um, we opened our own factory in the 90s, uh, started the Blanco brand. Um, it was shortly after that we had to close it in 2000 because there were three of us, my uncle Francisco, my father and myself. I mentioned my uncle Francisco was also a, a, a veteran. He was a Vietnam veteran. He served 20 mm -hmm. years. But as wow. he got older, he uh, he started suffering from effects of uh, exposure to Agent Orange. And oh, uh, so he couldn't work anymore. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he couldn't operate in the factory anymore, which is what his primary function was, the day-to-day -day operation of the factory. So we had to close our factory, which was located here in Ybor City in Tampa. Oh, okay. That's where we opened. And uh, so... What we had to do is then uh, figure out what we were going to do because he was in a wheelchair. My father called his cousin in Nicaragua and asked if we could move production there since we were buying raw material anyway from them. And they said, absolutely, come on down. This was, you know, early boutique days. 1998 is when we started. I started doing research and work in 97. By the time we had to move facilities, it was 2000. And um, and that those cousins were the Placentias and uh, Nestor Sr., who I uh, admire and lovingly call uncle rather than cousin because he's my father's generation, right? He's 75 years old. I don't, it's a little weird in the Hispanic culture when it's the, the, the older generation, you refer to them with a little respect with a, right. with a title and that's uncle, right? Mm -hmm. In Spanish, it's tío, right? Tío. So mm -hmm. I refer to him as uncle Nestor or tío Nestor. Technically, he's my cousin, but he's my father's age. So now Nestor <laughs> Jr. and I <clears throat> really refer to each other as, as cousin. Yeah. Um, well, because and that kind of segues me it. here in another one that you have is the primos, your your other one. Cause so it, somebody's it, been it, studying Spanish. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Here, here's the funny thing is um, I grew up, my dad, as I stated, was military. He also owned his own business. And he said, you're in Texas, the language of the future is Spanish. So from sixth grade on, I was not allowed, it, Spanish was the primary language that was spoken. My brother lived in Spain, he, he lived in uh, Chile. And um, so wow. whenever he came back to the state to live with us, so when we were there, we only spoke Spanish. My dad didn't know a word of Spanish, so it was my brother and I. So I'm, I had lessons from sixth grade up for Spanish and actually was like one hour shy of minoring from Spanish. So, um, well, tú prefieres I, hablar conmigo en español en, en él en, en, en inglés también eh, para todo el mundo puede, puede hablar eh, y los dos idiomas cualquier. <laughs> y Gravier is no entiendo. <laughs> I, I basically said if you want to talk to me in Spanish, you can talk to me in English, then yeah. we could. We can do the interview do for the yeah. entire world and everybody world. can listen to us. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then Greybeard would be lost. He'd be like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, no so, that, no so um, that was like one thing is because like I knew that your family had, your dad came to Cuba and then, uh, and you grew up in Chicago area, correct? That's where I was born and raised in Chicago. Okay. I'm a, I'm a Chicago Cuban. Chicago Cuban. And, I'm not Miami and, Cuban. I'm Chicago Cuban. <laughs> and then y'all went and you had your business. And then, so because I didn't know what happened, but then you blended for, as you said, Placencia, which are your cousins, correct? Right. So I blended at the Placencia factory when we moved okay. our facility there as far as production. So I blended all of my cigars there. And then as my company grew and the years that I had in business grew and my distribution grew, other people were like, man, Dave, I love your cigars. Yeah. I would love to have my own brand. I would mm -hmm. like you to blend my cigar. So I began blending cigars for other people. And of course, if I blended it for them, it was automatically made at the Placencia factory. 
Right. So it, my question is like, when did you start blending? Because I know it's, I don't want to say it's in your, your heritage, your blood or whatever, but when did you start playing around yeah. and doing the blending? I started blending and, and messing around in 1997 because I was trying to research because I knew I wanted to open the company and we had, we come up with a business model, and everything else, but I was like, okay, I better, I better figure out what yeah. I'm doing here. I don't know anything about what I'm doing. Right. I was right. smoking cigars since I was a much younger age, but I had no idea of blending it myself. Uh-huh. So I found some uh, gentleman here who had uh, cigar shops in Ybor City, uh, and then we ended up working with him. Uh, he was a Cuban gentleman. And so he taught me uh, the ins and outs of blending and how to blend and what different leaves were, fermentation. Um, but it was cursory because I was, I was new, right? I was like a sponge trying to absorb everything I, I could. So I, I, I blended my first cigar in 1998, uh, and that was the premier selection, our first cigars that we came out with. It was a Connecticut Shade, a Maduro, a Criollo, and a uh, Sumatra. Um, we came out with four blends, and uh, I thought at the time that for a first crack at things, these were pretty good. Turns out they were pretty good, um, but I look back at it now, and I say, boy, what, what a novice, you know, because it's like martial arts. The more you train – the deeper you get, then you realize what a white belt really looks like. And uh, and that's what I was. I make no bones about it. I mean, I had somebody teaching me and and, and guiding me. But as far as my, my own organic knowledge, um, it wasn't until I got to the Placencia factory in 2000 that I actually met my mentor. And um, I credit three people with my success today to, to be where I'm at sitting here in front of you today with my company. And, and one of them is my father. Uh, without him becoming my partner and my other uncle, Francisco, uh, who had to leave after two years, of course, because of his illness. But without my father becoming my partner, this wouldn't have occurred. Uh, without Nestor Placencia and the material resources that are at his disposal, which then became at my disposal, mm-hmm. I could not have accomplished what I did. And the and my mentor that I met down there as a blender, his name was Avelio Oviedo Minguez. Uh, he was a little black gentleman. Yeah, hi. He was a really short guy. He looked like Al Jolson. He always wore a hat like Al Jolson. <laughs> and he had a cigar in his mouth. He started in the business uh, in Cuba when he was eight years old. He was the rolling union president of Cuba before the revolution as an adult. Wow. That's- and he ran the H Oven factory uh, as wow. far as the quality control and master wow. blender and master roller. So he blended many cigars throughout his life after he left Cuba for many different companies. And he, I met him as he was the master blender at the Placencia factory at the time when I got there in 19, oh, well, I met him in 98, but started working with him in 2000. Um, and his biggest claim to fame was the cigar blends that he had created for the Cuban industry at the time before the revolution. So you guys have probably heard of a little brand called Monte Cristo. Oh yeah. Uh, just a little, it's, it's a small little brand. No, so hard to find. Fame, his claim to fame was he was the guy who blended the Monte Cristo number two and number four. Oh, okay. The, the oh, iconic oh. torpedo yeah, Monte Cristo number two was yeah, blended like, by Avelio. And so okay. this was the gentleman that I was lucky and blessed to be able to have teach me over 11 years before his death. Uh, so yeah. I think I he died in 2010, 11. So I, I like a sponge, like a Padawan to a... Jedi Master, I learned, attempted to absorb everything that I could uh, so it wouldn't die with him, number one. But number two, I yeah. wanted to become as good as he was. Mm-hmm. But I I hope I do him justice uh, with, with my work, with my art, because that's how I view this. Mm-hmm. It's my art. I can't paint. I can't draw. I blend tobaccos, and that's my art. And as long as people enjoy my art, then uh, they'll continue to buy it, and I know I'm, I'm successful. I'm very blessed well, to be able to do for a living what my passion is. I, I could probably make more money doing other things, but I don't need to be the richest man in the world. Sometimes being rich is more than monetary wealth. It's yeah. it's being happy. And it, um, it, It's funny that you say that because I was just saying that to my son not even an hour and a half ago to, to where I was, I was, he was like, well, I, he's like, I need more money. Why? So I can be successful. So success isn't in the money. Success is that you're being able to provide for yourself. Success mm-hmm. is that you don't give up. You push and you try and you learn. And and success is that you find ways to be happy no matter what situation you are. So I love that you're saying that right here. 
because our younger people, our younger generations need to learn that. So side, hold, hold Sidebar. <laughs> for a moment there. But uh, I, I got to say, I mean, and, and I, I smoked the iconic Monte Cristo number two. And mm -hmm. I, I want to say smoking this one, and I think I've smoked just about every single one of, well, I think I've smoked three or four of your different blends. And you're doing your mentors justice. This is a absolutely beautiful smoke. It is, and it's it's one that I'm going to be I'm going to be finding more of because this this yeah. is very enjoyable. Thank Most you. definitely, mm -hmm. it it okay. is it is very beautiful, um, and it and the thing I like about it is you get a little bit something different each time. You know, it's mm -hmm. not you know um, just one consistent thing. So uh, profile. So you I'll, were, you were, I'll, go I'll, before you go into the your, your next question, uh, definitely medium body as far as in the amount of smoke that you get, but the flavors, they're intense. Yeah. yeah. The, the the flavors it's intense, are, but not in a strong way. Not a, not a full body. It's just it's, a very complex, flavorful cigar without the strength. Mm -hmm. Which, which, yeah. which, which tells me that the, that the tobacco has got some age to it. It's, you know, the oh, yeah. age. So those acidity levels, those nicotine levels have come down on it. It's nice. And it's, it's evened out. I mean, this is, this is, you're hitting it on, on all aspects of it. Yeah. So, so the, the three facets of the importance of what our company motto is that pertains to you guys as consumers is the quality of the tobacco that our family grows in the placentias are second to none. In mm -hmm. their quality of tobacco, as, as a matter of fact, they're the largest tobacco growers in Central America. Two is the tradition in which that we roll the cigars in the methodology that we've always done in a very consistent manner that burns well. So quality, mm -hmm. tradition that we roll the cigars. And then the last one is value to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so in that vein, the one thing that we haven't discussed, so people are also aware about the cigar, mm -hmm. is that the retail price is somewhere between eight fifty to $11 mm -hmm. in four yep. sizes. So that's why I say yeah. range. Um, mm -hmm. Very affordable. Uh, a portion of the proceeds also go, like we mentioned. So we're, we're not trying to um, overextend people. We want to make it affordable and enjoyable. Uh, so we make something I could have charged more for this cigar based on the material that mm -hmm. we use. But the point is to sell as much as possible because this is a volume product that we want to put out to raise as much money and and to honor those as, as we can. Um, we have other cigars that are less expensive. And we have other cigars that are more expensive. Uh, it all depends on the, the niche in which I'm trying to fill, not only socioeconomic niche with regard to the value of that product, but the availability of tobaccos, the age of the tobaccos, <clears throat> and then the flavor profile. I tend to think and believe that I have just about something for everybody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you said you smoked four of my blends. I can tell you right now, because I have some sitting in front of me, I have one. Four, at least four, 15 blends. Wow. 15 different blends I've done that I personally own among six different brands. And then, of course, the other brands that I manufacture for. So in 15 blends, I try to touch all segments of the the tasting wheel, uh, the strength profile, and the economic profile. I have cigars that are $3 to $16, $17, and everywhere in between. And so that's what really, as a, as a company, we've been doing this now for 20, almost 25 years. Actually, February will be our 25th anniversary, which is, I can't believe it when I say it. Um, we have a complete portfolio, and, and it takes a while to, to create a complete portfolio, um, especially in the past 25 years and the things that we've gone through. We had to close our factory and move. Uh, we had to work through two wars, Afghanistan and Iraq. My father and I both served. Um, we had the debacle of 2008 with the housing crisis. We had the debacle of the S-chip, uh, 41 cents I increase, uh, or for the S-chip, which is a 700% increase in federal excise tax for our industry. Then we have the FDA. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have we have gone through a lot in the past 20 plus years in this industry. There's been a tremendous change. There's also been a tremendous growth. It hasn't all been negative, 
But I think with our growth, we've also brought the attention of the legislatures and the regulators because now it's become real money. And when there's real money in any industry, suddenly the government puts their hand out and starts regulating it to get a piece. Yes. So oh, yeah. my largest partner in the company that I'm a sole owner of is the government. <laughs> it's, they have no risk. They have no investment. They're my largest partner and most profitable <laughs> out of anybody involved. <laughs> and, and that's true. That is so true. If that's not the definition of socialism, I don't know what is, guys. <laughs> how so, how to have here? Well, I was going to, uh, Bert B. Smokin or Albert and Jay Hernandez says, what is Blanco's favorite or go-to stick that he likes to smoke? So what is the your Blanco favorite? Blanco 9 in Lancero. Easy answer. Wait a minute. You've what? got the Blanco I haven't had nine? that in a Lancero. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was rated number one cigar of the year in 2018 by consumers on irobusto.com. It also got a 95 in the CA and a 93 in smoke, 90 in cigar snob. It was rated best buy in the Toro size in Cigar Journal. But really what put me on the map way back when, and I've had the Blanco 9 since 2006, 2007, I think, something like that. Um, when I had the Blanco 9 Lancero featured in Cigar Aficionado, in the ratings and in the Lancero category, uh -huh. it tied the Cohiba Lancero from Cuba. And that's when people started recognizing who the hell is this Blanco guy? <laughs> and what is this Blanco 9? It's rated the same as the Cuban Cohiba. You got to remember back in those days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was like the, that was the thing. Everybody yeah. read the ratings, right? And Cohiba was yeah. huge. The yeah. Lancero, of course, was the Cohiba that uh, Fidel Castro made popular and and mm -hmm. famous because that's all he smoked. All and he I guess the price point back then on that cigar was almost $20 on the Cohiba Lancero. Yeah. And yeah. I think mine at the time was like seven. Wow. So people are like, what? It's the same number. It's where, so I started getting phone calls and I said, well, yeah, it's a great cigar, but they're like, do you have it in any other size? It's gotta be good. I'm like, yeah, I have it in like six sizes. So Robusto, Toro, Torpedo, Double Corona. Uh, we made a JT Limitado, which is a limited edition, which I can talk to you about. Uh, and the blend of that Blanco 9 is is my favorite. I'm actually smoking the new size. This is the Blanco 9. And that is a, that, I'm going to excuse my French for a minute, but that's a damn good smoke right there. That is a damn, that is a damn good smoke. Well, see, and we were first introduced to the, to the 9 when you came to NFG back in March. In fact, you know, it's when you say that you're about to celebrate your 25th anniversary and we Red and I, we've been involved in, you know, boutique cigars for quite some time. And this was the first time that we had seen any of your type, any of your mm -hmm. brands and your, or your brand. And yeah. so one, I want to say that's pretty amazing that you're hitting 25 years. But then my, my question comes into is, is uh you know how how many stores are you in in the united states you know where 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 are you at? people yeah so we it, it, i'll tell you we have we still have holes in the united states uh mm -hmm. where you don't find our product very readily available uh texas is becoming one of our more popular states uh because we have representation there uh, our rep there is uh nick uh, he lives in san antonio you guys have met him i'm sure yep um Nick Clark, and um, we have reps in the Northeast, in the Southeast, uh, Florida. Um, and so the areas where we have representation, uh, going into the shops, um, introducing the cigars, not only to retailers, but the consumers, and then doing events, doing promotions, things of that nature, we find success. It's those areas that we don't have anybody on the ground. Uh, this is a very labor intensive and old school industry. It's all relationship based. Mm -hmm. it is. And if you don't have somebody on the ground, you know, pressing the flesh uh, and uh, making uh, friends okay. with people and creating relationships, uh, you're not on the shelf, quite frankly. And that's easy. Okay. That's easily understandable because mm -hmm. this industry is way oversaturated with product uh, right. than there is space in any one store. So shop owners have the option yeah. and, and the ability to just decide to do business with those people that they either like mm -hmm. or they know. Exactly. So if, there is, if there isn't a relationship and I can't be everywhere, 
um, you don't have your product on the shelf. Now, that, that is to say, it's not that I, I'm not trying and we continue to grow. Um, I also have a presence around the world. I'm not just based in the United States. I've been an international company now for at least 11, 12 years. Uh, we sell throughout every continent in the world. Uh, except oh, wow. Antarctica, I can't get the penguins to smoke cigars. Yeah. But I, we, we are in, we're in Europe, Asia, Africa, the Middle East. Um, wow. uh, we we actually used to do a decent amount of business in Australia, and we don't anymore really because of well, because the, of the government heavy, restraint about and heavy taxes tax and their plain crazy. packaging, which is now no packaging. Right. Um, they have to sell naked sticks. Most of the stores have been closed. There's a few that still survive, mm -hmm. but they've all but decimated the cigar industry in Australia. Yeah. Um, so there's places like that. Uh, Cal uh, mm -hmm. Ca Canada has now gone to plain packaging. So we've had to switch over to green la plain labels up there. So we're in the Caribbean and different islands. So um, I, I don't I don't or I haven't only focused on the United States. Right. Um, however, the United States is the largest <laughs> market. I would love to have more coverage in the United States and we continue to grow that. But I'll be frank with you, it's very difficult to find good employees in any industry right now. Right. Uh, and there are very few, it's a very small niche industry, the cigar business. So they don't grow on trees, you know? Uh, and good reps, and you guys have been around for a while, mm -hmm. you can count them on probably one hand. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how many and how many companies are out there? Oh, I don't yeah. have enough hundreds of thousands. To it, it's yeah, it's ridiculous. And right. and what you were saying is so true, especially like with brick and mortar. They have such a huge selection, and it's about the relationship. Because mm -hmm. I know several shop managers, I know several shop owners, and if a rep pisses them off or does dirty or is not reputable, then they're like they'll say they'll say F you, we can go find somewhere else. So that is very true. It is based on relationship. And that's one thing that I love, facet I love about like the cigar community and the bourbon community and the beer community and the coffee. It's very, well, coffee, not so much, but it's very, it's based on relationships and how you treat it. It's a tight community. It it's, a tight, it's a tight community. It's a, it's a tight culture. We've now been using the word culture in culture. the industry because mm -hmm. yep, there's a certain culture of, of, Social media has brought us closer together. It's brought us uh, being able to do virtual herfs and and Zoom calls together, not just because of the pandemic, but that even accelerated it. So right. imagine if, if you have a bad rep you get or a rep that has pissed people off, you don't get put in the shelves. But imagine if you don't have any rep. Yeah. You're, you're Very tough. Yeah. But Very you can tough. also order from your website as well. Which is one of the reasons that we have an MSRP website. And I stress that to any retailer who's listening out here. We don't use that as a, a comp competition to, 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 to compete okay. against you guys right. uh, that do business with us or those of you that might be interested in doing business with us. We do that as a marketing tool because I don't have coverage everywhere. Right. So what I've actually found that it does is it creates disciples of Blanco yeah. cigars that enjoy our cigars in certain areas of the country. We don't have reps. And they've actually brought and have emailed me and say, I brought my local brick and mortar, some of your cigars that I bought, because I would love to buy them there. I wanted to introduce them for you mm -hmm. and see if they would bring them in. I told them I'd be happy to buy them from them. Wow. That <laughs> that's was, that, cool. that's, that's the biggest compliment I can, mm -hmm. I can ever imagine is that my own consumers are willing to take the time and effort out of their own pocket, by the way, to bring their cigars that, and hand them a couple to smoke and say, Hey, mm -hmm. I'd love to have these cigars in the shop so I could buy them from you. Because I like to contribute to my local brick and mortar, you know, local businesses, which mm -hmm. is what we want to do. Um, right. But in the absence of that, I use it as a marketing tool. And that's why it's MSRP. I don't compete because we don't give discounts per se as an advertised marketed price, everyday price. Now, there are some special exemptions with that. And those are special events, holidays, things like that. Sure, I will go out there and give a discount. Uh, and by the way, we only sell five packs and boxes. We don't sell single sticks. That's not what this is about. Those are retailer brick and mortar guys. I'm not trying to compete with that either. But <clears throat> every day of the, of the week on a normal advertising basis, it's full full retail for a box or five pack plus shipping. Unless there's a special holiday, Veterans Day, 
Memorial yeah. Day, Fourth of July, and I've and and there are, and there are more. There are some def, definitely some different holidays that we take advantage of to give people an ins, or incentivize them to try our cigars that they otherwise would not have. And so I want to just segue into this right now. It's an easy way to do it. This is one of those times when I do events or interviews or podcasts like I'm doing with you guys. I know that there are listeners out there that might be interested in trying our cigars and may not have a brick and mortar around them. So what I would like to offer you guys is a coupon code at our website. Go to BlancoCigars.com. Your coupon code is SHOW22, S-H-O-W-2-2. And you'll be able to get 15% off anything on our website with the exception of two products. It is the Cigars for Warriors bags because we support them and those are already subsidized by us. And our vintage cigar boxes that of uh, a product that we've made that are over 20 years old, my original productions that I actually put out there for sale, but I don't discount those either. Those the, the age and the time on those is incredible. And we don't ask a tremendous amount of money for them, so we're not discounting those. Okay. Everything you else can get 15% off and free shipping over $75 on your order. Until what, what's the website? Sunday. What's the web address? What's your URL? Blancocigars.com. Simple as that. I hope uh, some of you guys will be happy to take advantage of it, save a few bucks, and try a myriad of cigars. Again, you don't have to buy a box. We do sell five packs. So if you want to try a five of this, a five of that, whatever it is, I'll be happy to talk about some of the blends now. And uh, if something wets your whistle that I show you, those, those yeah. might be opportunity for the travels. Now, I want you to say, because I, th I think you said it, but okay, first of all, I wanted to know where the Blanco 9, where's 9? Okay. So come from. Because I have a why not ocho. Porque right. no ocho. Porque es 21. Porque. <laughs> the reason is very English. simple, and this is the easiest named cigar I've ever done. I generally have a long-winded story and meaning and sentiment behind why I do things with all of and, my and, brands. And, like and he's, he's laughing. He is laughing it's hysterically. Because he knows it's true. <laughs> he knows it's true. I don't, I usually, for me to be moved, to make something and bring out a new brand, I've got to be moved behind a meaning behind it, like the above and beyond heroes line. Mm -hmm. That's that's a perfect example. It has deep meaning for me. It has a reason behind it. And we'll talk about some of my other brands. Similarly, I have meanings behind all of them. Right. The Blanco nine, however, I really didn't have meaning behind the naming. Huh. I did it earlier in my oh. career. The nine was actually when we were blending it, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the quick story behind it because it actually has an origin in Texas. Oh, woo -hoo -hoo. yep. So this cigar was I I had done my four initial blends, and I was looking for a fuller body stick to create a niche, you know, to create to add that to the portfolio. And I was doing some business with a cigar shop in San Antonio called Cigar uh, Cigar San Antonio, and uh, they said, "Listen, we're looking for a house brand," and I said, "Well." Um, I'm looking to create a new brand that's medium to three quarter body, something on the fuller side, because I haven't done that yet. And they're like, well, that's the kind of cigar that we like to sell or we think we would sell well in our, our shop. Uh, our guy, our employee here uh, would be happy to go down to Nicaragua with you and lend his palate, you know, to make sure that it's something that we think we could sell as well. And I said, sure, what we'll do is we'll use your shop as a beta test. And if it's successful, we'll do something special for you with a certain sizes or secondary band that's specific to you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring it to the world uh, as our next release. And they said, sure, that's great. So uh, the employee at the time, his name was Joe Torres or Jose Torres. Yes, I know him. Do you know Joe? <laughs> I was right? going to ask if it was Joe. I seriously was going to ask. I was like, I'm going to was... talking about Joe. So this oh. is Joe's entrance into the cigar business. Oh. Joe's first store was Cigar San Antonio, I believe, and we did their grand opening. I met Joe at that point. We made this relationship. He came down to Nicaragua with me. We blended the nine together. <clears throat> and while we're blending it, we blended the initial one and we're like, nah, it's not quite there. We have a scribe, right? That writes down the blends as we're mm -hmm. doing them. And, and we said, well, we got to start over. We'll keep this and we'll tweak it. And we'll change mm -hmm. some uh, percentages of the fillers and maybe we'll change the buy. And so we kept tweaking and tweaking until it wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite there. And finally we got to it. And I was like, I think this is it, Joe. What is it? This is it. Uh, so we turned to the scribe and we literally said, 
which one is this? And he said, it's the ninth one. I said, okay, we'll just call it the block of nine. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Because I was like, okay, what, what, what does the nine stand for? But hey. It could have as easily have been the eight or the ten, but it just so happens we hit it on the head on the ninth blend. So that was it. That Very was it. cool. And yeah, so when we made our limited edition, like that. what's that? So you got to love a story like that. Yeah. yeah. That's about as easy a story as you're ever going to get out of me. Because the rest <laughs> of them after that, I started saying to myself, for me to put this kind of money and effort into something, and it takes a lot of money to release a new line, mm -hmm. I got to have something, but it's got to be, it's got to mean something to me. And right. so the meaning behind it was as important to me as the cigar. Um, so when we came out with, a larger ring gauge in the Blanco 9, which we didn't have. Um, we reblended the core fillers oh. as the base. I couldn't, I couldn't just change the ratios and make it larger. It was flat. So I had to add another filler, another Lajero. So it's four Lajeros. Then it was still flat, but it was better. And then, so I changed the wrapper into a Lajero binder and it was still flat. And I said, at that point, do we have a Lajero wrapper? And so we looked around and we found... Now, the Blanco 9, the regular 9, mm -hmm. is triple a hero, early priming, so it's not a pepper mm -hmm. bomb. It's it's more balanced. Mm -hmm. And then it has an Oscuro Corojo, or what we call Oscuro Corojo, mm -hmm. dark Corojo wrapper yeah. from Nicaragua, 100% Nicaragua. So I kept those three core Lajeros. I, I added another Lajero for girth. I changed the binder to Lajero, and at that point I said, what do we have in Lajero wrapper? And he said, we have an Oscuro but not Corojo wrapper. We have an Oscuro Habano Lijero wrapper. Ooh. I said, let's try it. Oh. So we tried it. Six different Lijeros, the whole cigar. And wow. it smoked It smoked beautifully, but it wouldn't burn. It took me two years to get the fermentation right on the six different variations of Lijeros to get it to burn evenly. And I had I no idea I what I was doing with regard to getting into this mess in my head. I didn't know it was going to take me this long, but once I was down the rabbit hole, I had to solve the problem. So it takes it takes me about two years to figure out how to get it to burn right. And it takes and what what I found out is it'll take me about two years to make the cigars because of the different fermentation times of all the all the six different Lajeros. So it'll burn evenly because Lajero is a very slow and poor combustion unless it's properly fermented. So it takes me about two years to make these cigars as well. Um, and to honor right. Joe. And his mm -hmm. contribution to the Blanco 9, I named the limited edition the Blanco 9 JT Limitado. Oh, okay. So that's where the JT is. Very cool. That's the JT. So you now, kind of I talked have a, about one thing. Now I have I a new size. Of, I got one, I got one less. I brought a new size out and I'm actually smoking it. It came out this last year. And I also introduced Joe to a, some vernacular that I picked up in the city of Chicago. Uh, I grew up in an Italian kind of neighborhood and there was a lot of italian slang yes and, I, and i'm anxious for you to say this slang because yeah. w one of the people who's watching is that slang <laughs> <laughs> so years ago when i first met joe and we did all this which had to be 2006 or something i introduced him to the word choo choo yeah <laughs> and you know as you go on in life you use you, you then you, you change the vocabulary up and you get another slang term that you use out there you know, whether it's goof or douche or whatever, you know, you use these different terms. Joe never lost the chooch. He just kept using it forever. That being said, um, I always remembered that. It was something that I used and I was like, man, you're still using that chooch thing, aren't you? Goes, yeah, well, now it's part of his vernacular. He's known as the chooch, right? So that being said, the new guys, I said, well, I know people have had a cigar named after them, but I don't know many people have had two cigars named after them. So this is the Blanco Night Chooch. Very it's a cool. 48. Now, I say that in jest because Joe's a great guy, and I don't think he's a chooch, but it's it's a funny thing. Well, it's funny that you say that because Joey G, part of the Great Lake Smoke Show. Or the Cigar and Pipe. The cigar, yeah, the great cigar and pipe show, and we were on their show last week on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and he's the one they call him the chooch, and so he's the one that just said Blanco Nine Chooch. Yeah, and he's so when he's I saw his show, 
<laughs> when I saw his show and they had a chooch segment, stump yep. the chooch. Yep, they did. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm sponsoring it. <laughs> yes, and you did, and you came across. And I'm like, we're having him next week. Yay. <laughs> so, yes. So, so, so that was the thing. So I kind of wanted to go back to what you were talking about. Like, you know, it took you several tries because a lot of people are out there and it's, you know, here at Twisted Pair, we're all about educating and getting behind the science because it is a science. And a lot of people just think that, oh, you just throw tobacco leaves together and it just magically happens. So um, I'm glad that you kind of went into that to say, hey, it just doesn't magically happen. You, there, you have to try the fermentation because we talk about it a lot on the show. And some people are like, mm, does it really like that? So I'm really glad that you kind of brought that out tonight. There's four links in the chain of a premium cigar. And without, if you have any weak link in any of the four, you're done. You get a bad product. Uh, the four links in the chain are um, the farming aspect, which is the growing of the tobacco. You can't have a great cigar without good tobacco. It has to start at the tobacco. Then the fermentation process has to be done correctly or you have ruined good tobacco. Mm -hmm. The blending will also ruin a cigar, even if you have great tobacco and it's a bad blend. The last element, of course, is the manual labor of the construction or the rolling of the cigar. Mm -hmm. You can have all three of those doing great and you have a bad roller, tight draw, canoes, uh, you know, it, it tunnels. So mm -hmm. any one of those is a weak link it's all ruined. So all of those are just as important. Some are more laborious and take more time than others to learn, but all of them are their own expertise in the industry. The Placencias are farmers, farmers. They have degrees in agronomy. That's what they first did back when they started. They weren't mm -hmm. making cigars. They were only growing tobacco. So that's what they know. Fermentation, they have experts in fermentation which is its own expertise, doing different things. This is where the, the proprietary issues come in to making a cigar. It's like a chef because you can hand raw material off the farm of the same leaves in the same plants in the same fields to four or five different factories. They will all ferment it differently. They do, do, they do different things with the proprietary issues of adding things to the fermentation process that changed the taste and the combustion of the tobacco. Now, fermentation is simply a chemical biological decomposition of a leaf. It's basically composting, right? The reason we do that is to leach out the ammonia in the tobacco leaf. Yep. Because if we don't, it smells like cigarette tobacco, which is just ammonia. You can't have all these nuances and tastes and little notes and tones with come out of the tobacco unless you get rid of the ammonia, which will cover it. So we have to break it down through the biological decomposition, chemical composition of fermentation. What also happens in that process is that we leach out a certain percentage, a large percentage, it turns out, of the nicotine. So now you wonder why you don't get physiologically addicted to cigar tobacco. Number one, we don't enhance it genetically. It's natural grown. And it only has a certain amount of nicotine to begin with. The fermentation process leaches out a lot of the nicotine with the ammonia at the same time. It also changes the, the molecule to a salt, which keeps the body from being able to absorb it in a lot of cases. Not all of it, but the majority of it. And since we don't inhale it, we're not absorbing it through the alveoli in the lungs. We're only absorbing a very small amount through the mucous membrane of the mouth. And we don't chain smoke them like cigarettes or anything else. That's why I tell people all the time, the difference between cigarettes and cigars is that this is not a nicotine delivery system. That is all the cigarette is meant to do. Deliver nicotine into your system and you become physiologically addicted to it. We don't do that. It's for taste and aroma. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know why we don't inhale it? There's no taste buds in our lungs. What's the point? <laughs> Smoke wasn't meant to be in the lungs. What's the point of that? The and, point of that and I'm is to absorb. That's it. And this has a really nice aroma to it as well. 
like it no. is a very nice it's very I, I mean i'm sitting here trying to sm smell it my allergies but even through my allergies i can smell i was like man this smells nice you know my kids won't so, run from this one <laughs> so do you retrohale i have to ask yes always Yes. Okay, and, and that's why so, I said because on the retro hell, oh, it was okay. some floral sweetness, but a little bit of that spice to it. And, so and now, as that a coming, now that I'm coming down into towards the final third of it, I'm getting a lot more pepper on it, but mm -hmm. still very nice, nice smooth. And I hate describing a cigar as smooth, but very nice smooth pepper notes, still cocoa notes all the way through. Yeah. But I'm starting to pick up a little bit of cinnamon on the retro. So a little bit of that sweet cooking mm -hmm. cinnamon spice on the retro now. Good deal. Glad you're enjoying it. So as a blender, we blend for taste and aroma through retrohaling. So I'm, I'm not telling anybody that if they're not retrohaling, they're not smoking their cigar correctly. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is as a blender, I blend specifically for both experiences, taste and aroma. Okay. So if you don't retrohale, you're not getting yeah. out of the cigar the experience that the blender is attempting to get you to um, enjoy or to experience. That doesn't mean you don't that you, you you have to do it. If you enjoy your cigars without retrohaling, by all means, I'm not trying to tell you how to smoke your cigar. It's your cigar. But if you want to get out of the cigar, what we as blenders put into it, retrohaling is essential because you're basically getting two thirds of the cigar. You're not getting that third dimension, which is through the higher olfactory, which is why you can't do it this way. It has to be through a retrohale. Yep. And so you don't necessarily have to drag in a cigar through your nose, the entire thing. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is push a little bit through your nose to coat that area mm -hmm. and push the rest through your mouth. You'll find with stronger tobaccos, you'll get that wasabi thing going on. Yeah, exactly. With milder cigar, that's why you don't drag in the entire thing. You just got to push right. a little smoke through your nose, coat that cavity, and then you push it through your mouth. And then you don't have to necessarily retrohale for another four, five, six drags. Mm -hmm. When it starts dissipating, that's when you refresh. That's when you do it. Yeah. That's it. We, we've even done it a couple of episodes where we taught, where we teach people how to retrohale. Mm -hmm. And then there, there's some people that just cannot figure out how to close their throat out to, to take that pharyngeal flap, bring it well, down so that you can then blow the smoke out through your nose. So what we tell them to do is puff up. So, so t take, a, take a good four, four count draw, puff it up. And then the smoke will naturally just start going up into those nasal mm -hmm. passages. And you don't right. have to worry about breathing it out, but it, you'll get it at the top part mm -hmm. of it, which hits some of those sensory uh, nerves in there. And then you'll be able to experience to a smaller degree of what a retro does for you. Well, I think so, it's like if you've had sinus, a lot of people have had sinus um, surgery for their sinus. They're not able to retro. I've, yeah, I've some people that, are not you know, able yeah. to. Deviated and, septums, people have issues. Right. You know, mm -hmm. yep. There are other issues. People with sinus uh, surgeries have had scar tissue. Yeah. But yeah. I've actually, um, I, I was doing polls after, I did an interview, another interview with Brian Glenn from Cigar Obsession. Yeah. And yeah. Um, he asked, he, he, he got, he received a lot of questions from people. Hey, Dave was talking about this retrohale thing. Could he give like a master class on how to retrohale? So I did. <laughs> and it was like a six minute video and I did it years mm -hmm. ago. And right before Brian left YouTube, because of all of the issues with tobacco and YouTube mm -hmm. right now, uh, we had over 80,000 views on my six-minute video on how to retrohale a cigar. 80,000-plus views. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so I, I started it. reading all the comments, and I realized that – I don't know about you guys, but I've gone. you guys have gone to bourbon tastings. Yep. I've gone to bourbon, and I've gone to wine tastings. So similar yeah. to bourbon and or wine tastings – in particular wine tasting, they teach you how to aerate the wine. Mm -hmm. They teach you how to experience the bouquet. Right. They teach you how to drink the wine using different parts of your tongue and taking in air at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they're teaching you how to drink a wine. Mm -hmm. I realized that in our industry, nobody taught anybody how to smoke a cigar. They taught them how to light it, cut it, and that was it. 
So and that's I, where we come in. That's where the and, twisted pair comes in. And it, 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 I, I mean, we've gone to the things of like retro heling, you know, as far as, you know, how to store your cigars. You have yeah. to know the you humidity. Store the wine. Of, yeah, you store your wine. And it's an investment. So, you know, it depends on where you live because the humidity of where you are. Yeah. And then uh, we talk about like Cubans are different than Nicaraguans. And, you know, so you have to have different humidities. And I, I think that's like one part that, you know, we've been, most people like the education part because no one's been out there to teach them that, you know, so it's a little bit different. And, and we, we teach how to, how to pair. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to know the blending because, you know, and I was able to pick up right off the bat that this was a, a Jalapa Habano mm -hmm. because of because of the regions and then what the terroir is. And if it was a uh, Ecuadorian Habano, we'd be getting completely different notes. If it was mm -hmm. a Honduran Habano, we'd be getting completely different notes on that. And then taking that information and then marrying those notes that you get from your wines, your whiskeys, your coffees, your teas, your beers, mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So all of those together take that experience on into the next level because now mm -hmm. you're pairing those flavors up and you're getting, you're, you're able to see notes in the cigar that may be more subtle and, and hidden because of some of the stronger ones and you get a balanced uh, pairing that's allowing some of those subtle notes to come up. Just the same as when we're pairing wines with foods. Some Different wine. types of foods is going to bring out subtler notes out, out of a Bordeaux to allow, say, that Cobb Franc or the, the Petit Bordeaux to be able to come forward because you paired it with something. All right, else. Pete Johnson, let me hold you up right there, Pete. <laughs> hey now. Pete's a wine guy, yeah. man. Pete loves Bordeaux. <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a I'm a wine guy too. In fact, the day before I went to um, Tampa, I got my scores back on my wine sommelier test. Oh, congratulations! You passed. I did. Congratulations, brother. That's a hell of an accomplishment. Thank you. So, I mean, you're 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 speaking our language, and this is what we wanted, and this is yeah. why we love bringing people like you on because you're. One, I mean, it's not just a validation of everything that we've been teaching from somebody who's embedded, married to the industry from a different angle than, than what we are. You know, we're social media, we're, you know, social media and ed educators, but you have your hands on the tobacco. You are Dude. doing this as, as a, you know, as your career, as what's supporting you and your family and everybody else. So. Hearing well, I've that. been an educator my whole life as well, so I appreciate mm -hmm. that that you guys are doing that. Um, no, no matter what I've done in my life, and like I mentioned, I've done other things. I was, I was a drill sergeant in the United States Army for crying out loud. <laughs> I was a paramedic instructor. I was a police in, uh, academy instructor. Uh, so everything I've done as a profession, I've also taught, and that's because, mm -hmm. as you probably might have guessed by now, I'm a Type A personality. And no, uh, really? You, you seem so Seriously? You seem, no. You seem so, you know, yeah. And so I, being I, a type A personality, that's part of wanting to perfect or be as good as you can at whatever you're doing. And when people see that you've 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 done it very well and you have excel and you're very good at what you're doing, mm -hmm. they try to get you to teach it to others if you're mm -hmm. able to teach. Now, not everybody can teach. No. I was I was I was given a lot of opportunities to learn and I've become a decent instructor and teacher of all things that I d choose to be very good at. Mm -hmm. And and of course, this as my passion, um, I've, I had to learn it to be a subject matter expert, as we call mm -hmm. the military, a SME subject matter yeah. expert. <laughs> um, so to be a subject matter expert for myself. I now can pass that information mm -hmm. to others and, and, and teach others. And I've taught a lot of people a lot about uh, tobacco and blending. I've brought a lot of people into this industry uh, that you may not even be aware of. Um, Sean Williams. I brought Sean Williams into this business uh, really? because he wanted his own. He's not, he's now the, the brand ambassador for Cohiba. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did his private label when he came and he wanted to get in the business and said, Dave, I want my own cigar. 
I said, come to Nicaragua. Let's talk. And we, we came down to Nicaragua with me and, and I, I taught him and immersed him and taught him about fermentation and blending. We blended his cigar the whole night. Now look at him, right? He's just an example. There are other people that I've made cigars for uh, successful brands that I've taught uh, the inside industry. I don't necessarily have to teach them about marketing and how to sell their product, but I teach them about tobacco and I teach them about cigars. So in that vein, I do a tour to Nicaragua. I do a yes. five day. I was going to ask you about that. I saw that. So if you could kind of expound on that, because y'all go to the different cities and regions. So, yeah, uh, so, so our tour is um, a little bit different than anybody else's tour. As a matter of fact, it's completely different than everybody's tour. It's yeah, I, you. I was like, yeah. this is insane because I've looked at other tours and I'm like, mm -hmm. you're getting a vast knowledge of the country. You the are. Region. And that's the point. I actually created this tour as uh, something I would do for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beyond cigars and just a tobacco. If I'm going to travel to another country uh, for a specific reason, whether it's the wine or the tobacco, or if I'm going scuba diving or whatever I'm doing, you do more than just that. Right. And so I created a tour that I could use as a vacation for people because mm -hmm. that's what I would do for myself while making it educational. So uh, what I did was I created the tour and formatted it um, so it fulfilled the requirements for, at the time, it was the uh, the the tobacconist university test for mm -hmm. being a, a a retail tobacconist, certified retail tobacconist. So if you take my tour, you fulfill the amount of hours you need in farming area, ah. in the pre industry area, in the fermentation area, in the blending area, and you Very fulfill your requirements. Depth. If you take my tour twice, you've you fulfilled enough hours for the master level. Oh, okay. Very so cool. I made sure that I created the itinerary to be able to fulfill those. Now that's the tobacco side. Of it. The rest of the tour, and it's odd to, I used to say this all the time, but it's a little strange to say it now because he's dead, unfortunately, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. I tend to view myself in this regard as the Anthony Bourdain of the cigar tours. Not that I'm a cigar tour guy. That's not my job. That's not what I do, but sharing my passion and sharing and educating people about the tobacco and everything else is also educating them about the country and the culture and the and people. The culture. Yeah. Cause and that plays a huge, it plays a huge impact and part of why we have the cigars, what the taste of it, and then mm -hmm. pairing the cigars with the food and the different. So our tour takes you through all of Nicaragua, which no other tour does. They just take you to Esteli in a farm and a factory and you get drunk and you smoke a ton of cigars. You get back on the bus and they take you back to the airport. That's not what we do. We land in uh, Managua. We go to Granada for the first entire day and evening. We spend the night there. Uh, it is the oldest colonial city in Central America, which Captain Morgan used to hang out with, that, with pirates and stuff. So we see that beautiful city. We take a boat tour, a boat cruise. Oh, wow. And then we eat uh, uh, at an, a place called Pirate Island. There's a lot of cigars involved as well, and a lot of <laughs> rum and beer yes. and food. Yes. And then yes. we go back to the city and we see all the sights. We have dinner at uh, one of the street uh, cafe, open air on the street mm -hmm. type uh, venues. Uh, we see all the beautiful old colonial hotels. Uh, and then we, I rent, we rent a hotel over there. We stay in a hotel. What I do when my hotel stays there, you actually stay at three different hotels. Mm -hmm. That hotel in that we we rent them the entire hotel. It's a boutique. We rent with boutique hotels. Very and cool. so we rent the entire place. We've got a pool. We've got plenty of rum. We can make as much noise as we want. We can smoke as many cigars as we want. We have a great time. That's the first day. You're not even in Esteli and you're not doing anything <laughs> about cigars. You're just enjoying yourself. Then we go to Esteli. We do two days there and we do what everybody else does with regard to education seed which means farm all the way to the box and you learn every one of those four links in the chain in depth you get a blending classes you get rolling classes oh, you get cool. a pairing class you get to do all that that's all during the day but what we also do is in the evening we kind of choose your own ending because i i'm your host i'm your your tour guide mm -hmm. as the tour, and we only do 10 people in a tour 
So what I'm able to do, I like to do that because it's more intimate. I can, mm-hmm. we can spend more time with each other and I can talk to everybody without having to like stay in line, walk this way. I don't have to do that. You don't need a flag. No, nope, here we nope. are. Blanco so what we do in the evening is we, we end it by now that we're done with the educational scripted portion of the itinerary for that day, what do you guys want to do? Want to go to the club, the bar, the casino? You want to sit on the roof and drink and smoke cigars? Whatever you guys want to do. So it's choose your own ending. As a result, I have people come down four or five times because every tour is a little bit different. Different. Yeah. Uh, after we do the two days in Esteli, we go to the beach. We go through Leon, which is the old capital city, the colonial city of Nicaragua. Mm-hmm. But we don't stay there. We stay on the beach, which is 15, 20 minutes away. And we rent a boutique hotel on the ocean. A friend of mine who's converted his, his beach home into a boutique hotel. Mm-hmm. And so we stay out there and we do a beach day. And then we have other activities that are non-factory related, obviously. So what do we do? We've done volcano surfing. We've done the Florida Canya factory tour, which is the big rump company. Uh, We've done sightseeing in Leon, which is a ton of things to see. Mm -hmm. And then that night, one of the nights, we go into the city and enjoy the nightlife. Again, to participate in the culture, Mm -hmm. to participate and see where your money goes. Because Mm -hmm. these are the end users on the other side of when you give your dollar for the cigar, mm-hmm. this is the other side, and these are the people actually living mm-hmm. on that in on, on that uh, economy based off income from the cigar industry. Okay. So you get full circle; you get to see everything, and then we drive you back to the next morning. We drive you back to Managua, so we do a big circle through the entire country. Mm-hmm. You get to do a lot of cool things, and you learned as much as you could. Uh, from you know one of the, one of the greatest uh, factories in the industry, which of course is the Placencia factory, uh, you know, and and me as your personal tour guide, which sign, is sign me rare. So. Sign, sign me up. I know. I know. When I saw that, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, they go to different cities, they do different things, it, and you're right. There's nothing else like that. And I was like, that nope. is really freaking cool. Nobody does it. I've had people do other tours and I'm not bashing these other tours yeah. and these other factories or anything. It's just the way they like to do it. And I get it. And what they're doing is marketing and advertising the product. A lot of the tours are three days and they're three days because you have a farm day, you have a factory day, and then you have a drink your face off day. And then you get back on a plane and go home. Um, and maybe they do one outside thing. And so you, then that's it. For me, it's, it's just as important to see and understand and learn about the people and the culture Mm -hmm. that are making your cigars and living on the economy as it is to see all about the tobacco itself. You have a greater appreciation for what these people go through, the life that they live and how they live based all on your leisurely activity. What, what I, what I, the two things that I really love about this is, is one is that aspect of getting to see the other side because a, a lot of us mm-hmm. miss that, you know, unless you've really studied it and, or you've been immersed in it, we, we mm-hmm. don't get to see that as, other aspect of it. Right. We go yeah. to the markets, the fruit markets, the meat markets. We, I mean, oh. the place we go to the back alleys where they're making tortillas by hand. Oh, with yes. Fresh mm-hmm. cheese from goats and cow milk and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you eat it right there. It's fresh. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the Anthony Bourdain side of the foodie thing. Right. Yeah. That's why I, I remember watching Anthony Bourdain when he first started his show. It was about food because he was a chef. Mm-hmm. Right. But he slowly morphed his show into the culture. It turned out to be culture, politics, religion, you know, everything, the total package of the location he was going mm-hmm. to. And by the way, Anthony Bourdain actually went to Nicaragua when he stayed in Esteli, oh, which was amazing cool. to me. And I was very upset yeah. because I, I knew of all the things he could have seen. And he could have shown people and he really didn't. He focused more on the food. Mm-hmm. And so I was a little, I wasn't upset, but I was, I knew he could have done so much more, but I know there's constraints with the TV show and everything else. Right. And everything. But I was, I was so excited for him to do that. Cause I was yeah. like, man, he should show all this stuff. And there isn't ever enough time, but right. uh, I take care of that. And I make sure I make Very sure. Cool. It, it's a great way to give back to the people and the other aspect mm-hmm love about everything that you said is the education side of it and to where you get your hours for for the tobacconist you know and the tobacconist university uh you know there's they've got a phenomenal program for mm-hmm. for the jets you know four different levels of, of tobacconist certification from small ea and master and retailist and, and specialist and really five because they've got the consumer as well 
And, yeah, they've expanded that thing because yeah. back then, like I said, when we did it, they didn't have that. They had the regular certified retailer and then the master. And yeah. so yeah. that's what we based it off. It's I so red is red is doing the tobacco -ness side of it, and I've got one more test to take, and then I'll have my uh, the other certification sommelier, the IACS, International Association of Cigar Sommeliers. So I've got one test left to finish that one. I just got to bear down and restudy <laughs> the material. But I know the material, but it's 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 fascinating that that you are focusing on the education on that because very few cigar brands will do that. I mean, I can count on one hand the number of from from boutiques to to the the big five mm -hmm. that, that will do anything like that yeah. and so you know i appreciate you know us as education we appreciate the fact that you do that so we, we've got a we got a question here and, and i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna guess this yeah. one's from, from out from bird because he's phenomenal with the <laughs> questions he's asking what's the price point for this tour uh it's now up to up to Nine hundred dollars for five days, four nights, everything included on the ground. That's Doesn't a great include everything, price. Includes everything else. Wow, that's phenomenal. If you did the tour on your own, it would probably cost you upwards around two grand. But because mm -hmm. I have relationships with the different hotels and the different uh, restaurants that we have to choose from, and the different uh, venues that we go to for different events, what they do is they give me group rates because I've mm -hmm. been doing these this tour for damn near twenty years. And so I have very good relationships with them. So they give me price breaks. And so I simply pass them on to you guys because I don't do tours to make money. Right. So the reason I do them is what you were saying. You were, you know, you were happy to see that I do them. I do them for twofold reasons. And one is very self-serving uh, to be frank with you. The reality yeah. is it builds brand loyalty yep. and people get to know our brand inside and out. They get to see it made. And when people have a transparency with a product line, a, 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 especially a premium uh, product mm -hmm. line that is um, of, of such handcrafted origins, they feel comfortable with it and they know it's quality, right? right. So mm -hmm. that's why we like to show what we do. The transparency builds a rapport with regard to a feeling of uh, the, the fact that it's being done correctly. They're now educated about it. They can speak about the the product like they never have before because now they've been educated because you like you said nobody does it but at the same time it also allows us to create more disciples of people who enjoy blanco cigars and they can truly speak about right. Them. Right. so they shore up my shortage of good salesmen mm -hmm. when i take people to the factory trust me when i tell you the appreciation for our cigars goes, goes up, up. In general, it goes up for yeah. all cigars because yeah. all cigars are made in similar manner. But right. because they went through it with me in particular, they have much greater affinity uh, right. and loyalty, brand loyalty. It creates some brand loyalty because to our it's product. personal for them. It's personal. That's right. And, that's right. right. So if and we that's why I do it, not not to make money. So it doesn't matter if I don't make any money on the tours. <laughs> so let's talk about your other one. Um, did we? I don't think we talked about the rapper and all that. So let's talk about our cousin, Primos. The Primos. The Primos, the Primos, Primos. Estate. Yes. So the Primos yes. Estate yes. selection comes in two different wrappers. Comes in Habano Rosado and Habano Maduro. Oh. I know you can't really see it here. I'm going to try to put it. There's five hands in the middle of that band. Oh, here yes. comes the story, guys. Oh, and the sword too. Yeah. In the paper. The story okay. is is that this cigar was made in celebration of the Placencias and Blanco families in the industry for five generations, as I mentioned earlier, right? Oh, so yeah. five hands connecting, passing the generational family industry down from one to the next. On the band is also a scroll. If you look at the band, it's like parchment paper, which represents mm -hmm. the scroll of knowledge, like a diploma, which all the, the Placencias have degrees in agronomy. They are farmers, farmers. The Blanco side of the family is represented. And again, I don't know if we can see it here. There's two swords. Yep. The two swords are also there representing the Blanco side of the family. Because as I mentioned before, generations of my family have been in the military, whether here or in other countries. Um, and so we have five generations of military. It's in a Roman numeral or a V for Roman numeral five for five generations. Oh, very cool. Both of those are encompassed in a gold circle 
The circle is the strongest symbolism of unbroken chain and the family is encompassed within the circle. And then of course the name primos is cousins. Mm -hmm. That's the word for cousins in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So this is all about the affiliation between the two families being cousins and being together in the industry. Love it. See, that's so again, cool. a lot of symbolism. Yes. <laughs> well, and I, was, I was I was trying to look at the band, but I'm in my dark dungeon lounge. And so I know that there's words on here. So what is the story behind the band? Because you said there was a story behind. Uh, oh, yes. The above and beyond. All yeah. right. So a lot of symbolism in every facet of this cigar. So let me start with the box, which you don't have in front of us. It's black. Black is the color of mourning. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why the band is black. It's the color of mourning. The cigar is box pressed, which is um, not to get too morbid, but it's emblematic oh. of the coffin yeah. because we drape the flag right. over the coffin. Oh, okay. Blanco is spelled out in red, blue, and gold for the reasons I mentioned before, because we all wore those hats. Red is for fire EMS, blue is for law enforcement, and gold is for military. On the back of the cigar, we have the fire department Maltese Cross, which is the fireman's band, uh, fireman's badge. We have a policeman's badge, which is a blue. And then for those of us in the military, we all know that when somebody loses a family member, is a member of the military, you're considered a gold star family member. Right. And that is a mm -hmm. gold star. Now, if you see there's writing in the background, you're alluding to this mm -hmm. writing that you can't really yeah. make out. It's also on the box, which is much more legible okay. on the interior and exterior. It's the oath of office oh. that we all take to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, oh, okay. foreign and domestic, yada, yada, yada. So help me God. The entire oath okay. is on that. And oh, it's wow. underneath all of the artwork because it represents the underpinning for why all of us wear a uniform, whether mm -hmm. it's to serve our community or to serve our country. Uh, we... We asked this conical cap that you were alluding to is the mm -hmm. first ever conical cap in the cigar industry. I wasn't doing it to be the first guy to come up with a conical cap. Yeah. That's it was accidental. Mm -hmm. The reason I, I came up with it is because I was trying to figure out a way to figure out how to represent a triangle with stars on it, which would mm -hmm. be emblematic of a folded flag. Right. So all four sizes are torpedo tipped. But yeah. basically what they are is a robusto size. Mm -hmm. a Toro size. This is the double Corona size. Mm -hmm. And then we have a six by 60. So we Ooh. cover the, the most popular sizes in the industry, basically mm -hmm. Robusto Toro six by 60 and double Corona. And we just mm -hmm. torpedoed them all. So I could put the conical cap on mm -hmm. the box itself has how many cigars in it? You want to guess? Uh, 21. 21. 21. 21. For the 21. 21 guns guns right. The four different sizes are named after the four different definitions of heroes. The willing hero, the unwilling hero, the epic hero, and the classic hero. So everything about this has meaning. From the names of the cigars to the, the design of the band to the design of the cigar being torpedoed has a function for it. Yeah. Uh, to, the, to the number of the cigars in the box. Mm -hmm. Everything has to mean something for us in this cigar. And then, of course the portion that we give back is yeah. probably one of the most important uh, right. of all of them. So you just heard two, the Primo story uh -huh. and the above and beyond story. Very intricate, very in-depth and have a lot mm -hmm. of meaning. Blanco right. nine, not so much. Yes. <laughs> now, Blanco, Blanco nine's got some, got some meaning because yes. Joe Torres was with you on it. Yeah, you went you went through a number of different cigars, the number nine with it. So that shows the, that shows the process, that shows the love, sure. that shows the the dedication mm -hmm. to it. Because really, I mean, unless you're really passionate about it, a lot of people don't don't understand <coughs> how this passion translates into how many you know how much work goes into finding mm -hmm. that perfect blend. That like like what you said as an artist. I mean, this is this is your medium as as an artist of uh, finding out that perfect what it is that you're trying to express with what you're creating, and that's what art is. And, and really is. that we always say whenever like it's a, we've always talked about how whenever you smoke a cigar, at first you're not you know the you're familiar with the taste, and it takes you to a memory, and and then you're able to relive relive that memory because of that 
And we always talk about behind a bourbon, behind a cigar, there's always some beautiful meaning that the creator has made. And whenever you smoke it, I, like for me, this is even more sentimental. You know, it's it's becoming more beautiful. Like the Primos, that is another beautiful, you know, yeah. story behind it. And I have more appreciation about it. I have to say, uh, I've been to a lot of events in my life having to do with cigars. And I've gotten to meet a lot of celebrities or in, in, in a lot of cases, people that aren't considered celebrities that I consider mm -hmm. celebrities. Right. Uh, and I think this past summer was, I, I got a little emotional. Um, I was presenting the, the Blanco cigar, the, the, the above and beyond. And um, the shop owner also had a special guest there. Uh, and I didn't know he was going to have until the last minute. And he was a recipient of the Medal of Honor. And to tell that story in front of him was quite interesting because I was actually talking about, generally speaking, the, the heroes that, d that don't make it, right? Because that's what we define as the heroes that yeah. are the ones that sacrifice them. In this case... I had a living one standing right next to me while I, mm -hmm. I did this. And I, I alluded to that. And, I, and as I turned to him, he was choked up. Mm -hmm. And at, at that point, I got emotional mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, it, me it meant something to me personally because I see the faces in my mm -hmm. head of those men right. and, and women. And uh, to see a living one standing right next to me, mm -hmm. and I know – if I see those faces, I know what he was going through as I was describing this. Mm -hmm. And so to, to turn and uh, as I was talking to the audience, try not to be emotional myself, to then look at him, I, I almost, I actually, I got choked up because he was getting choked up. And, uh, <laughs> he tried to make yeah. light of it immediately, as we all do in the military, yeah. tried to deflect yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like... Uh, you know, I, I came here to smoke cigars, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about my charity as, uh, you know, the charity I had going on. And mm -hmm. he was like, I didn't know I was going to run into this, you know. Yeah. And, the damn um, allergies, the damn allergies. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, quite meaningful. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's why we do it, because it's truly remembering those. I mean, it's personal. Yeah. It's not just names that we're saying, you know, thank you to those guys that whoever they were. Right. I wear a bracelet every day of one of my buddies mm -hmm. that got blown up in front of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've known people in those other uniforms die in front of me, especially as a mm -hmm. paramedic. I'm the one called yeah. to try to save them. Right. And uh, sometimes they don't make it. And so mm -hmm. I'm the last face, if you can believe that one, that they see on this earth. And um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a deep thing. You know, you try not to think mm -hmm. about it when you're doing it. You try to detach yourself. Right. But um, you think about it after. And yeah. that's as I get older. I think about all of them and um, mm -hmm. I try to remember them every time I light a cigar. Right. Well, thank you and, for, thank you for everything that you yeah. have done. And I'm not saying this to end the show, but cause we're not, <laughs> but I, just, Good, I, want, I got more blends to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> I want to say thank you for, yeah. for your service in all the areas that you serve your community, your family and, and this amazing country that we are mm -hmm. so blessed to be in mm -hmm. and just and for this gift back to to us you know because i've never had the opportunity to serve but i consider it a gift to us but especially the gift to to those who serve right there next to you mm -hmm. and are no longer with us so well, bottom yeah. of my thank heart you. thank you yeah yeah I, I i thank you on behalf of them and and their memory yeah. um yeah so let's and not uh dwell on that too much <laughs> like he did so <laughs> like he so, would say you said you had you said you had a couple more ones just only like one or two right <laughs> oh yeah so Wonderful. let me talk about a quicker story than the others this is the blanco liga exclusiva de familia wow that's a mouthful it, <laughs> it is a mouthful yeah so the liga exclusiva de familia simply means in english the exclusive blend of the family mm -hmm. why because this one was a, the Connecticut was a cigar that I blended for my father that he oh. smoked privately, uh, that he enjoyed. 
and I specifically crafted it to his taste and what he wanted. Oh, very cool. It's a Connecticut shade grown in the Tolunga Valley in Honduras. All Nicaraguan filler binder. He ended up getting a 92 in Smoke magazine. And uh, it's unique because I tried that blend with all three Connecticut shades that we have in, in our warehouse, which is Ecuadorian, uh, the Tolunga Valley, which is grown by the Placentias in Honduras, and then U.S. Connecticut. And I found that the blend, and there's where the blending part comes in me, it's the the acrid bitterness aftertaste finish of the U.S. Connecticut didn't work well. The mm -hmm. Ecuadorian Connecticut is slightly sweeter, and it affected the fillers that I was trying to have come to the forefront. And the for those of you that aren't familiar with the Honduran Connecticut shade, uh, it's very neutral and has a very clean finish. And what that allowed me to do is add the Connecticut flavor without a bitter or sweet aftertaste which allowed the fillers to come out to the front. So it's more of a medium at best uh, Connecticut shade. A lot of flavor, again, a lot of nuance in the tastes, but not a lot of strength because that's what my father liked. I, on the other hand, prefer the Maduro. So I was smoking this cigar for myself, and I figured this is the bookend to the blends and the brand that we were going to bring yeah. out. This is a Pennsylvania Broadleaf yeah. Maduro. It's grown in Lancaster, Pennsylvania by the Amish. Uh, our family buys it from them. It's all Nicaraguan filler and binder again, but completely different tobaccos than my father's blend. This is more of a medium plus cigar. Uh, I used other broadleafs on this, but I settled on the Pennsylvania broadleaf when I was making it for myself because of the unique flavor profile. The Amish don't smoke tobacco, but boy, do they grow good tobacco. <laughs> up in Pennsylvania. And what they do is they don't use a lot of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. They do it very old school. Mm -hmm. And because they do it old school, it has a very unique profile that I blended with these tobaccos from Nicaragua. Uh, this also got a 92 in Smoke Magazine, but this, however, was rated number two cigar of the year as voted by consumers on Ira Busto as well. So I have a number one cigar of the year with the Blanco 9. Mm -hmm. I have a number two cigar of the year with the Liga Exclusiva mm -hmm. and the Pennsylvania Broadleaf. And I actually have in the Primos, it was rated best value cigar of the year in Cigar Aficionado when I brought it out. So I have a number one, a number two, and a best value. So I've pretty much covered the gamut uh, with regard to decent ratings uh, with those three cigars, but all of my cigars have been uh, rated highly. And uh, I'm very proud of that because that means my peers and the consumers enjoy them as well. I prefer to have consumer ratings than I do magazine ratings, although magazine ratings also come yep. uh, because we all know that there's a certain element of commercialism when it comes to the magazines. Um, mm -hmm. It is what it is. It's the world we live in. Mm -hmm. but who really matters yeah. rating my cigar, as far as I'm concerned, are the consumers because they're the ones buying it. And no matter what somebody in a magazine says about my cigar, it might get them as the consumers to buy it the first time. But if it's not a great cigar, they won't buy it again. It, it's so interesting. I consumers say that it's a great stick. I know it's going to be successful because they're the ones that are paying the money to buy it. Right. And so, so another brand that I came out recently with is the Prince Hall. Yes. Prince I Hall. said that one. Yes. All yes. right. That's, this that's comes in what I've had. two different blends again. Comes in Habano Rosado and Habano Maduro. This is a 7 by 70 I finally broke the seal and made a 7 by 70 I did it in Buster both wrappers. Terry. I did it in both wrappers, but people loved it. So you got to give the consumers what they want. Right. right. Now, the only time I've ever smoked this is in the factory when I made sure the blend is exactly what I wanted it to be. Because I'm just not a big ring gauge guy. I don't even prefer six by sixties. I'm a Lancero, Corona, yeah. Lonsdale, Robusto right. guy. I'll do I'll do a Toro, no problem. But I, I'm not a big ring gauge guy, but right. it is what it is for the marketplace. So this cigar in Maduro is all Nicaraguan except for the binder. It's from Sumatra, from the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. And the Rosado is a 100% Nicaraguan cigar. Um, this cigar has a great story as well. Um, it was named after the man, Prince Hall. And people say, well, who is Prince Hall? Nathan. I consider Prince Hall one of the founding fathers of our country. He lived during the colonial period in the United States in Boston, Massachusetts. He was a business owner. He was thought to be one of the first men to join the Continental Army and fight in the Revolutionary War, which makes him an original Army veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was also drawn to masonry, as all of our other 
I don't want to say all, but a lot. Majority, of our, majority of, our of our founding fathers. Correct. So he was drawn to masonry. Um, unfortunately, he was denied acceptance into masonry. And he, he was drawn to masonry for the integrity of the institution and the uh, fraternity and the, the equality issues and the philanthropic uh, organization for which it was. And most of the people in power at the time and influencers that were of any status, it was part of the society at the time. And he was denied. Um, and he was the there was a, a very good reason at the time for which he was denied. And it's because of the one thing I left out of his story. He was black. He was black. He was a free black man living in Boston during the colonial period, a business owner, a leading abolitionist of his time, thought to be one of the first black men to join the Continental Army to fight in the revolution. But because he was black and slaves were prevalent at that time in our history, he was denied acceptance. However, being the man that he was, he didn't give up that easy. Uh, before the war, he found a, um, a garrison of uh, Irish conscripts that were in Boston. And he asked them if he could join their lodge. And they said, sure, go on in. And the reason they said yes and didn't have the same issue is because you had to understand, again, the time period. The Irish conscripts were about this much higher on the totem pole than the blacks were because they were the cannon fodder for the redcoats. Mm -hmm. The other guys that were basically sent in first to get blown up by the cannons and everything else. And then the redcoats would come in. So they'd have to kill their own men. So they didn't have any of this issue of, yeah, he's black. Come on, join in. So he joined. And then of course, Prince Hall said, Hey, uh, you got, I got a couple black buddies. Uh, you might have to join. Yeah, sure. Come on in. So now there's a, a few of them. Eventually grew to, Hey, can we start our own lodge? Uh, just for you know, our black guys, and we'll just go over and do our own thing. They said, ah, can't do it. Can't do it. It's kind of like a motorcycle club, right? You have to petition the Grand Lodge, which was in London at the time of England, and ask for a petition to start a charter for your own lodge. So what did he do? Signed on and sent it out, you know, horseback, tall ship, horseback. And uh, he just let it go. And then the war broke out, right? So all these guys disappear. The war is over. It's now the United States. And if you look on the band, it has a year on it. 1787 on either side of it. 11 years after the war, he gets a petition back from the Grand Lodge of England. And it says, your petition has been granted to start your own lodge. Now, he had been meeting with his guys anyway, but not officially because it had, was right. sanctioned by right. the Grand Lodge. So they renamed the lodge because now they're official with their their uh, their charter, African Lodge Number 1. And the master of the lodge, what they called the master at the time, mm -hmm. uh, was Prince Hall himself because it was his founding idea. And so this begins the two hierarchies of masonry in the United States. Free and accepted masons, which is what Jeff, you know Washington and all these guys were called. Mm -hmm. And they had to come up with another name for the African-American uh, legacy, right? right? So they took his name. They said, well, we we'll honor you. You're the, you're the first leader of the first lodge. And this was because of your petition. We will be known from now on as Prince Hall Masons. So even to today, there is an African-American lineage of mm -hmm. Prince Hall Lodges. And there is a free and accepted masonry uh, heritage of, Prince, of, of lodges. But today we we'll recognize each other. Mm -hmm. We all have no problem. We, co we all believe in the same thing. We all have the same oaths that, that we take and we, we say the same things. We believe the same things. But because of the cultural history, Prince Hall remains their own separate, but we're interactive with each other. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the leader of my free and accepted lodge, mm -hmm. and by the way, you can be black or white and join either one now. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to be African American to join Prince Hall. You can be white. However, the, the master of my lodge was formerly Prince Hall. And came to free and accepted Mason because he moved and it was a closer lodge. Mm -hmm. And now he's the he's the master of my lodge. So we're totally interchangeable for all intents and purposes for the reason we're in the fraternity. And so we're a very philanthropic organization and we try to do a lot of good things. By no means are we trying to take over the world, guys. <laughs> we're not a secret organization at all. We're just a closed fraternity to that, of course. Unless you're a member of the fraternity, there are certain things you're not. 
privy to know. But we are not yeah. secret. You pass any no, Masonic yeah. Lodge and it says Masons. So there's no secret. <laughs> <laughs> By far. Yeah. Did you did you happen to visit the one in Fort Worth when you were out here? Absolutely. Absolutely. Gorgeous. It's huge. It's yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. I've traveled the world and everywhere I go, I try to see because Masons are everywhere. They're not just in right. the United States. Right. Uh, by the way, we're selling the Prince Hall in Europe as well. They don't care about the story because they don't understand it. They right. just enjoy the cigar. Yeah. There we um, go. So in Germany, I've been to Lodge. I've been to the Grand Lodge in England at, on the 300th anniversary. Oh, of the brand. we even made a, a I made it through another brand that I do uh, cigar. I used to, go to make cigars for another company uh, mm -hmm. for a particular company. And they were he was with me and he's also a Mason. So we made a uh -huh. special 300th anniversary cigar for the Grand Lodge of England. And it just so happened that that was on my birthday in 2017. So that was a hell of a birthday party. I went to. I was like, it would be. Yeah, that was a lot, of fun. a lot of fun. So the last cigar that I have to talk about, I guess last four because <laughs> it's other one it's under one brand it's under one brand it's called cigar obsession and i alluded to brian glenn earlier brian glenn is a world-renowned reviewer of cigars professional consumer and and he also ends up acting as consumer reports for everything cigar doesn't matter if it's a cigar if it's a lighter if it's a cutter if it's a humidor if it's a He'll give you a little review on it to see if you should buy uh, or if it works properly. Yeah, yeah. Or so this brand is called, although I own it outright, he doesn't have any ownership of it because he didn't want to sully his independence with his reviewing. Uh, he is a professional consumer and reviewer. He used this as a fun thing to be a part of. And what I basically did was allow him to approve the blends uh, for which I came up with. And we, we started it with the online fan club for Cigar Obsession, and then it grew to I sell it all over the world. And that cigar is a four-cigar series right now, about to be a fifth when I can get it out. The first one on this side is an Ecuadorian Sumatra blend. It's called the Cigar Obsession First Third. It's box-pressed. comes in four different sizes, Robusto, Toro, Tor uh, Salomon, and Lancero. Because I'm a Lancero guy. And I guess, yeah. yes, the right. Lancero is best pressed as well. The second third comes in, this is a Cameroon, comes in a Robusto, Toro, Perfecto, and Churchill. The final third is a very interesting story. Because at the time, the FDA was talking about slamming the door on the industry and no new products were going to be able to come out of the market. So I said, we may not be able to get five blends out, Brian. We might only be able to get three. If that's the case, I should be making you your favorite cigar if you're walking around with a cigar that says Cigar Obsession on it, right? <laughs> so, Brian, what is your favorite cigar? You know, um, I'll have to give you my version of whatever your favorite cigar is so you can, because that's what you like. So he told me, oh, yeah, it's the Padron 50th in Natural. I said, you couldn't have made it any easier, Brian. Thank you very much. So after going through reverse engineering a Padron Family 50th in natural, I came up with the final third. Now, they make that cigar in Robusto only, mm -hmm. and it's like 30 bucks, 27, yeah. 30 bucks in states with low tax, 35, 38 in, cigar, in states with high tax. Yep. I make it in Robusto, and it comes out to, I think, $13. So half the price. Yep. We also make it in Toro, and these are box pressed. Toro. Torpedo and yes, Lancero, because that's me. Then the door didn't close. We won a case. We got a punt down the road, so we had more time. So I was able to bring out the fourth in the line. Uh -huh. This is called the BG Reserve. BG standing for Brian Glenn. This is box pressed, pigtailed, and closed foot. Mm -hmm. This comes in four different sizes as well. This is a Mexican San Andreas blend. Ooh. Ooh. Comes in Robusto, yeah. Toro, which is actually a barber pole. I put Connecticut Talunga oh. barber pole on there. Talunga Valley, remember the Connecticut? Yeah. And then we also did it in a a, a short Lonsdale, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a different smaller side. I didn't want to do another Lancero because it was getting kind of played out. And then this <laughs> baby right here. This is pretty much the same mold as the Drew Estate Pig, but 
I box pressed it. And the traditional name for this size is figurado, like mm -hmm. a figure, right? It's shaped. So instead of calling it a figurado, although that's what it's called on the box, and it's similar to the Drew Estate pig size, we call it a fig. Ah, oh, that's cute. Figurado with the pig. And so those are the four blends that we have in the uh, Cigar Obsession line. The fifth one, God willing, I come out with it, will be called the DB Selection with my initials. Since we have Brian's initials, my initials, and the three COs. And those are called the first third, second third, and final third because that's how mm -hmm. he does his reviews, right? Uh -huh. He smokes the cigar. He says, mm -hmm. here's what I get out of the final third. So it was easy to come up with the yeah. names that meant something as mm -hmm. far as the line was concerned. The last cigar I talk about is actually a bundle line because remember I told you I had cigars in the three three fifty three eighty dollar range. Mm -hmm. It's the Primos Estate Sel um, sorry uh, uh, classic, not to mm -hmm. be confused with the Primos Estate Selection, which is our best value cigar of the year, high premium, all premium tobacco line. This is a sandwich. This comes in three blends as far as wrappers: Natural, which is a Connecticut shade, Sumatra, from Indonesia. And we also have it in a Maduro. This comes in five sizes, Robusto, Toro, Torpedo, Double Corona, and Poquito, which is a four by 38. Awesome. It's a short little quick smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, we also make that in the Blanco 9. It's oh, basically, really? it's a four inch Lancero because it's a four by 38 instead of a seven inch by 38. And we make them in five packs for the nine. And this, we just make everything in bundles of 20. So the tobacco in this, is actually all the premium tobacco leftovers from everything else I make. So it's mixed filler, not short filler, yeah. mixed filler, whole leaf binder, premium wrapper, all premium fillers, obviously, from everything else I make. Mm -hmm. And because it's medium filler or Cuban sandwich, as it's relatively right. easily referred to, it's cost less money. So this, mm -hmm. depending on the side, goes from 250 to 380 a stick. Wow. And we sell them in bundles. So that's why I have a, a, a place for everything. I don't even waste my my leftovers when it comes to the medium filler uh, that we have from our premium blend. We just blend that's them together. That's very cool. That's so very cool. That is the portfolio of Blanco Cigars for now. We have another cigar that we'd like to release next year called The Order of the Eastern Star, which is another appendage. It'll be the bookend yeah. to the Prince Hall. Okay. That's and what I was going to say. That has some mason to it. Right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm also a fifth generation master mason. So oh, okay. we have my masonry they, in my family. Those lives. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a, and I'm a Shriner, which is, yes. if you're not familiar with the yeah. Shriners Hospital yeah. for Children, that's our philanthropic mm -hmm. uh, attachment there is to, for the children. Mm -hmm. um, the Order of the Eastern Star benefits MS. And as I mentioned to you oh, earlier, my mm -hmm. uncle suffered from MS. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to do something with them. Uh, then, of course, the other cigar that we'd like to bring out next year, and some of this is all based on economy, uh, availability of tobaccos, but this is our plan as of now. Next year is our 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we would like to bring out a 25th anniversary cigar. I was, was going to ask you if, if you were going to do that. Well, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as the economy doesn't fall out, the, you know, the, the bottom doesn't fall out, Mm -hmm. And uh, we can continue to move forward uh, as expected with finances and sales. Mm -hmm. Then that is the plan. Uh, I hesitate on giving dates be because whenever I give a date, it never ends up Happens coming to fruition. On that date. <laughs> because <laughs> then the logistics and production and aging and oh my yeah. god. So uh, I hesitate to say a date, but those are the two things on the horizon. Not to mention some other collaborations that people have asked me to work with uh, on them, with them. And so there'll be some other brands that may not have my name on it, but like mm -hmm. I make cigars for other people, there are some other uh, new collaboration efforts that people have asked me to blend and work with. Very cool. So, yeah. you, you stay are, busy. You are, busy what, you are one busy guy. Mm -hmm. I am. On November 5th, we have our customer <laughs> appreciation event. So talk about yeah. busy. I got that coming up. We, yeah, so, uh, we, we've had 150 that. people here in the past. Um, you know, it's a full dinner, dessert, raffle. We raffle a trip to Nicaragua last year, a TV, all kinds of cool stuff. We have a DJ. Uh, we have some special things in store. I don't mention our friends from um, the Great Lakes Smoke Show are flying here and will be here to mm -hmm. do a live podcast, Cigars for Warriors. 
was here last year, and hopefully they will be here again this year. So it's a huge party. Uh, so lots, we have of, a great lots, of <laughs> lots of cooches. Lots of chooches in the house. Chooches. Chooches. That's right. I, I always, I never know, I, and I got to look this up. I don't know if it's plural is chooches or chuchai. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Joey G, if you're still on with us. What, yeah, what, he's still on. What is it? What is it? What is it? Your, well, he was, he, was, he, was, he was excited about the Mexican San Andreas. And, yeah. you know, that's Greybeard and I love it's uh, like, San Andreas. It's like fish. The plural of fish is fish. It's not fishes. Yeah, fishes. Maybe the plural yeah. of chooch is just chooch. Chooch. I have I, a I bunch of chooch. chooch. Yeah, you, you have a bunch know. of chooch coming. You know, <laughs> we have that, a flock that or a gaggle of chooch. That that would make sense because you know Joe, Joey G is is definitely chooch in multiple ways. So I'm gonna say my favorite picture was when they had the jackass with his head on it. I was just oh, like, yeah. yeah, those guys are good guys over there. Yeah. When I first when I first met them, and they said they were the Great Lake Smoke Show. I said, "Well, I'm from Chicago. You guys, are, oh, they were from Waukegan, which is just a suburb just north of Chicago, not far." Mm -hmm. And then they opened their mouth and started talking. I'm like, you guys are not from Chicago. I'm like, what do you guys all witness protection program from New York to Chicago? What's going <laughs> yeah, on? They <laughs> and I was, yeah, they're all from New York, but, th but uh -huh. they're all now transplanted in Chicago and it, they got heavy accents. So I found yeah, that they have their, Yeah. I was like, what are you saying? You know, the Texan <laughs> in me couldn't understand. I was like, I need a translator, please. <laughs> and then we had Jarrah last year as well. Yes. That's actually... It's actually where Jera met the guys mm -hmm. from the Great Lakes Smoke Show uh, oh. through me, and that's mm -hmm. what started their relationship. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And uh, and and we've done a lot of uh, events together since then. I've been down to Texas many. Uh, I did the um, NFG, the, the softball. I did the. Um, oh yeah, that's right. When you came down game. to Globe uh, uh, Globe Life, it's, it's hard mm -hmm. for me to call it Globe Life. But yeah, you were down there for that. It's where it's it's where the uh, who plays the, um, uh, the Texas Rangers play. Yeah, let me tell you, I am a huge. I played softball growing up, so huge baseball. And and I played back when girls, you know, we were first starting out. It was, I mean, it had been played, but girls were finally getting out there. And I was a catcher. They did now they have catching uniforms made for women and I had to use catching uniforms made for men with the little oh. cup thing down hey. below, you know, back in the day. And so they had some so, breathing room. Yes, yes. So <laughs> so it's you know, I, I'm passionate about the sport. And I, I will have to say this. I'm glad for the new changes that were made, but it broke my heart when Nolan Ryan left. And ever since Nolan Ryan left, their pitching went down. And yeah, but I still, well, I, gotta I tell still you, it was would one go of the sit in the rain. Yeah, it was Gorgeous. one of the greatest experiences I ever had to play in that game. It was a celebrity softball game, and all the money that was raised was for veterans organization. And uh, Tim Clund was the guy who put it on. And uh, we had the Gronkowski brothers on our team, um, a lot of celebrities. Um, Dax was supposed to be on our team. Uh, Zeke, Zeke Elliott. Um, yeah. Michael Irvin. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just uh, celebrity uh, football players, but we had uh, world oh, championship yeah. uh, um, rodeo uh, riders. We had singers. We had actors. Um, we had a myriad of celebrities. And then the other half of the team uh, were veterans. Yeah. And so um, I'm not one of the celebrities. I was one of the veterans. <laughs> 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 but it was so, a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. So we know that uh, someone was like, there said that there were Angel uh, Diaz Perez. He's thinking about going to the Blanco Herf because you're having a Herf coming up. Awesome. Yes. Yes. So if you could tell our viewers a little bit about the Herf that's coming up. Right. So it's the 5th of November, which is a Saturday. It starts at, I believe, 12 or 1 o'clock in the noon or 1 in the afternoon. It's going to go till midnight. Um, you can buy tickets. We prefer you buy tickets because this was the first time I've actually had it as a ticketed event for logistics mm -hmm. reasons, because we, the food, I mean, we, the first year we did, it was 60, then it was 80, then it was hundred, then it was 125, 150. Mm -hmm. I, it's gotten, I, I can't, I can't yeah. just guess anymore. The numbers are too big. So, right. uh, this year it's a $50 ticket, dinner, 
dessert, two drink tickets, a cigar. I think you get you're automatically entered into the raffle, DJ, and then you can buy more tickets for the raffles. We're gonna have custom things going on that I don't want to mention everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have entertainment with the uh, Great Lake Smoke Show. Cigars for Warriors will be there. So we have a, a, a benefit element to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a just a big party. Um, it's huge. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a eat, drink, smoke, herf. It's what herfs mm -hmm. are. Uh, it's a, a bunch of people that come uh, all together from around the world, uh, get together and, and smoke and make friends and We've made friends from all over the place, right? Yeah. I mean, and, so. I know you have someone sitting across the pond right next to you. That's right. <laughs> Dom. With a funny accent. A funny accent. <laughs> Southern England. What, what is Southern what England? Is Southern England. Southern England. Southern England. What, what is Dom smoking? Dom is smoking a Prince, Prince Hall Maduro. Maduro. All right. And that is the uh, Toro, Toro size? Or Toro, yes. Yeah, the Toro size, we call that a compass. <laughs> um, the Robusto is called the square oh, okay. and the Toro is mm -hmm. called the compass. And that is emblematic for of the Masonic yeah. logo. Mm -hmm. That is a square and compass. Mm -hmm. So that's right. what we call them square compass. And then uh, we have the level, which is another implement tool right. that we refer to. And then the two seven by seventies in the Maduro, it's called the Boaz. And in the Rosado, it's called the Jacob which are the two pillars on King in the porch of King Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're huge. And they reminded me of two big pillars. On, so I call mm -hmm. them Boaz and Jacob. So. so what you could do is have him just do the voiceovers for your uh, cigar name. Because Absolutely. If you call so our beautiful. office, uh -huh. if you call it's our office, voice. you actually will hear an English voice on the phone. That's going to be his name. His voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling Blanco Cigars. And it's all in English. They're going to be like, what? What? Okay, okay. We sound classy that way. There you go. <laughs> but I don't know if you saw that, but and and they said they said tell him, Mr. Blanco, and he says hi. I'm sorry, who says? Angel. I'll say it in my American eyes. Angel. Oh, Angel. Angel and he. Yes. Angel. Oh yeah, I see it right here. It says tell him Angel says hello. Yeah. Hola, Angel. Or, or, Get down. So, so okay. while I was while I was in Tampa, Angel actually came came up and, and met with me, and we went to uh, Corona Cigar, uh, which was just right down from my hotel, and so got to. I can't uh, believe you were here, and I didn't know it. Unbelievable. And, That's and right. I, I met I met Angel through the Bourbon community, so I'm a, I'm a Bourbon Thieves member, and so met him that way. And so I mean, just talking about how the communities come together. They do. Mm -hmm. they do. And by the way, for your tickets, BlancoCigars.com. Go right on our Good website, day. buy a ticket. Um, you will be able to buy tickets at the door. But we strongly and highly encourage you to do it through our website so we can get a head count for food mm -hmm. purposes. Yes. So. All right. So you guys heard it right here. You can get tickets for the Herp. It's on uh, November 5th, Saturday, 1 o'clock till the city. Whenever. City comes and shuts them down and says, "You guys got to start <laughs> private property. They ain't shutting anything down." All right, so even even better. So <laughs> so we're at we're at the the top of the hour, two hours, and uh, I, I mean we can keep going on for a little bit more if you want to keep going on, but we want to be respectful to your time. Wow, look at that burn she's got going on there. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I'm 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 fine with uh, if you got if there are questions and people are interested in in, in talking, I'm all about it because that's what we're here for. Yeah, so yeah, if you guys got some more questions, we've had some good ones. Keep them coming. And I'm yeah. gonna go and, through and, this while you're doing that. Things. We're gonna pour a bourbon. Yes. Bourbon for you, sir. Oh, not <laughs> yet. So uh, Chris Coulter said NFG 22 was awesome. Can't wait to see y'all again. Outstanding. Yes, it was. It was a great time. Hopefully, it, it's, I was going to ask you what you thought because we're a pretty rough crowd. It was a little chilly that day. That's what I remember. It was, it was very chilly that day. I had on, like, I was the one in a heavy coat and I kept it on the entire time. Boots, scarves, all that stuff. So, as long as I can get Jarrah at my booth again, I can't wait. Because Jarrah worked yeah. with us and acted as a brand ambassador that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love Jarrah. She's a great girl. 
Um, Jer- salt Jer- of the Jer- earth. Yeah, great patriot and uh, wholesome girl. We, yes. we had her on the show. She she was able to jump on with us for about an hour and talk about all that she's doing. Uh, oh, she's doing a lot. She's a fire. She does. Yes, she is. Yes, he is. And then uh, Chef from Underground says a right. Blanco siding. He goes a Blanco siding. I love uh, Chef. Chef, I miss you, brother. Don't worry. When uh, I come back down, it's tacos. You know that. <laughs> and when then, I come to the uh, shop at the Underground, I buy lunch for everybody and we do tacos. Oh. That's right. I'll make sure that I'm there. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, Bert B. Smokin or Albert Hernandez says that he got his above and beyond from three and one cigars in Chula Vista, California. There you go. It's one of our shops in Cali. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, he paired it with an Oktoberfest by Golden Road Brewery. I'm wondering how that was paired. You know, and that was the thing is I want to say that. Uh, uh, above and beyond heroes it was phenomenal with my pumpkin beer because it i was. had three yeah because i had three or four different ones and i had one that was like a pumpkin in your face one that was like a medium and this one was more like a pumpkin pie of the sweetness and it was really i could taste a lot of that uh sweetness like a baker like the you know how that pumpkin spice got the cinnamon and vanilla in sure. it it really mm-hmm. brought those two t- they complemented each other so it was great. I'm looking at some of the other questions too. I got to get this one out of the way real quick because it's near and dear to my heart because I'm a, sp- a sports guy. Uh, Cubs, go Cubs. Somebody's asking Cubs or Sox. I'm North Side, so I'm Cubs guy. However, as a Chicago sports fan, I can root for the Sox, but I prefer <laughs> the Cubs. They're my team. I wasn't I, I born for far from the Wrigley Field. But that being said, Sox fans, for those of you that don't know, cannot root for the Cubs fans or the Cubs team. They're strictly Sox fans, and that's it. They'll they'll be like boo for the Cubs no matter what. I actually go to both games because I'm a I'm a sports guy and I love Chicago uh, sports. But I am a I'm a Cubs fan. If I have to pick when they play each other, it's Cubs. It's the Cubs. So, what other brand do you smoke? Be and I'm gonna say besides your family, because. Sure. You know, so I have a few fa- favorites that I don't manufacture. Uh, obviously, I wish I was the only one in the corner of the market on great cigars, but of course I'm not. <laughs> um, uh, I will start with my good buddy Pete. Uh, uh, Pete oh, makes a cigar called the Coho New 2003. Yep. Great stick. That's from by Tatuaje, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is the Oliva V in Lancero. Oh, yeah. Gotta be the Lancero. Yes. See, you can't smoke the other. I- I'm glad that you're bringing this out because we'll say Lancero. A lot of guys don't want to try the Lancero because it's like, oh, it's the girly stick. It's the girly stick. It's the lady stick. That is the best flavored. If you want to truly know a cigar, am I like, this is what we say. If you want to truly enjoy and get the everything out of a cigar, you've got to go with the Lancero. I mean, yeah. because it's just, you, you, it's more flavor. You get more bang out of it. So the re- the way I, I I correlate that for people in a non cigar way is I use the analogy of Kool Aid. So you have your powder, and then you slowly add water. The the less water, the more concentrated the the flavor is in the Kool Aid. Right. The more water, the more watered down it is, and more mild the flavor profile is. Mm-hmm. Similarly, with smaller lumen or smaller gauge cigars, the larger the wrapper plays a part in the blend. Yeah. And so you get a more concentrated flavor. Right. Uh, I try very hard when I do a bigger ring gauge, like that 7 by 70 that I make, yeah. to purposely change the ratios to amp up the, the strength mm-hmm. in those cigars to match what because it is. Because you in the lose. Tool. You lose yeah, it. You just lose too much. It's Not, just, because it's too big. You it, know? It's too much filler. So right. unless I amp things up purposely in the filler department to compensate for the amount of filler there is, you you, you go, man, this is just not the same cigar. Every Vitola is going to have a slightly different profile, no matter mm-hmm. what the blend. Right. But I try to keep at least a remote similarity mm-hmm. uh, to that blend in the larger ring gauge. But they are always going to smoke cooler. Right. Um, so uh, so that the, that's the that's two right. Uh, right. Another mm-hmm. one would be the. Uh, uh, 
Kendall uh, makes my, my buddy uh, um, uh, Kurt um, uh, from 724. Um, it's a it's a brand that is made by At the Placentia Factory, but it is his brand, and he makes one, and it's called Dog Walker, and it's oh, a great yeah. great stick, small ring gauge, smaller stick, and, and I've the had it. Four Dog Walker is a, is a mm -hmm. tremendous short smoke. If it I'm not smoking the nine, it's my yeah. preferred short smoke. Um, so that's three. The and other I actually one, forgot about that one until you said it. I was like, yeah, that it's a, not that's found a everywhere. No, it is a hard to find cigar and it is really good. Great on the price point too. Yep. And then my other one is a unicorn. Uh, I haven't smoked one in years because there are no more to be found, but it'll always in my memory ring as one of the best cigars I've ever smoked. And it's the only Cuban on the list. It was the uh, Partagas 150th anniversary um in torpedo that i bought while i was visiting my family in cuba in 1999 and then again in 2000 um and i was able to pick up a few boxes for myself and i being young i smoked them way too fast yeah <laughs> oh man <laughs> now i can't get them anymore they're gone my, they're my, gone. Unicorn, is, my unicorn is a particus as well it's a, it's a part cuban particus series d I mean, just but phenomenal cigar. And now, if you if you can find one, then you're paying like a thousand dollars plus a stick for it because it's just just for one. Wait, so you said the Partica Series D, or is there yeah. a special one? It's the number two, Ser Series D number two. We have a gentleman over here from England who who, who has cigars, the Cuban cigars over there. That's that's for for years. That's literally all we could all we could get. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. everywhere I've everywhere I've looked around is like I can't find it anywhere, and it's one of it's one of my unicorns. So the Partagas Series D, if I'm not mistaken, just won uh, in Cigar Journal Magazine Cigar of the Year Cuban, mm -hmm. as far as the the Cuban brand uh, and and the Cuban size. So, but I digress. I was just in Dortmund, Germany, for the uh, trade show and the the. I was going to ask if you were out there. I was, I was, mm -hmm. I generally spend four or five weeks out there uh, during this time frame because I go see all my European distributors. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it this year because of the war in Ukraine, number one. And number two, mm -hmm. they're going to have some serious issues this year with uh, heating their homes. The economy oh. is, if we think we got it rough, yeah. they're about to feel some pain. And I didn't oh. feel it was appropriate for me to go around Europe, traipsing around, selling cigars and when everybody I know in the front of their mind was, we got it's a mess. A struggle. Yeah. Yeah. We got a mess right now. Um, yeah. I, I have decent distributors in certain countries and I made friends with new distributors in other countries that we weren't doing business with, or I, I'm in the process of changing to larger distributors. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, hanging out and trying to schmooze and party. And I know these guys wanted to get back because things were going on and much more mm -hmm. serious things so that are yeah. world uh, you know, issues, uh, that were mm -hmm. really important issues Yeah, um, that they have to deal with. And so yeah. I didn't want to impose this year. Right. No, understood. So we, we got another question. Um, what bourbon or whiskey or non-alcoholic drink would you pair with one of your cigars? Ooh, that's, well, that's a, a funny one. question. That's a funny question because I'm going to revert back to an experience I had with Pete Johnson again, uh, smoking with him and Esteli one time. And we went out for lunch and uh, he didn't want to drink and he ordered something. And, I, and when he ordered, I just looked at him. My jaw was agape and I was just shocked. And uh, it was orange Fanta for him. Orange Fanta. It, I was just like, but I tried it. It was pretty good with, depending on the cigar you're smoking. But right. that's not Very it for good. me. It's not it right. for me. If, if for me, um, if it's not coffee, mm -hmm. which is not alcoholic, I, I'm a coffee fanatic. As a matter of fact, yeah. I might be also doing a coffee one day. Um, I've been messing around with that. I've also I've already done a small batch bourbon. We did a small batch bourbon release. Uh, we did a barrel right. and we sold like 200, all 250 bottles in like three weeks. So that was a proof of concept. So maybe I'll do something with bourbon. Since I have friends uh, that own Horse Soldier Bourbon and a few other distilleries mm -hmm. like Alamo in San oh, yeah. Antonio, 
yeah. the Alamos, who I did my first small batch bourbon release with with them. Okay, they, they, they did a great job with what what we asked them to do. Alamos uh, got some good juice for sure. Oh boy, it was it was aged in, uh, I think it, it was, I want to say sherry casks or something. Like. Ooh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, but if I'm gonna give you an answer for the question you asked me, and it's not coffee, because I know that's probably what you weren't you weren't getting at. <laughs> uh, I would have to say Dr. Pepper. I've I've done a lot of pairings yeah. with Dr. Pepper. I've done some pairings with Orange Fanta. And a couple of weeks ago, we did a we did a pairing with non-alcoholic drinks. We did a pairing with soda, and Red and I both went with more of the craft type sodas, mm -hmm. and found that th that's a very difficult pairing to do. Because one, one of the things we talk about is, you know, cigars are very complex in flavor, so we always pair, you know, choose a cigar, and then we pick what's going to pair to it based upon the flavor profiles. Well, your your cigar is not really going to change any of the notes in, in a in a soda. So figuring that out, we we had such a a challenging time that by the time we got near to the end of the show, <laughs> we both went and grabbed a bourbon <laughs> to finish our cigars. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's I, a lot I, of sugar yeah. in the sodas too. Yeah. That kind of makes it difficult. But but Dr. Pepper's got twenty three flavors. Yes, it, does. it is. It, it does. does. <laughs> and and it, well, and another like you know, being Texan, we're all about the Dr. Pepper. So that's where I would always go to. But uh, after I did a flight of sodas because I couldn't make up because it was like cream soda, and then I was thinking, okay, I'm going to do an orange because you think of the IPAs, you think of your citrus beers, they pair really well with cigars. So I was thinking, okay, the orange in that will, you know, kind of, yeah, I think that was my worst one. It was because I it think was an orange cream soda sugar. would probably go good with a Connecticut shade. It might, and, but I think it's because the natural sugar and it was an orange cream soda. And oh. then I had, I had um, a root beer and then, oh, the equivalent to like a big red. It was kind of like a big red. Like a lot of people don't know what the big red is. People are like big red. So it's like your strawberry Fanta like that but yeah we went i went i went back to my smoked wagon <laughs> yeah yeah we, we I know went, some, back, went back i know there's some people that like the um topo chico yeah yeah i see a lot of people drinking that in texas with a cigar but it dries out my mouth on that i don't know well, an old-fashioned well that's yes. alcoholic. an alcoholic one yeah. all right yeah, but we try we, I did, uh, and we do old fashions a lot. Manhattan. That's I love Manhattans. I make a killer Manhattan. Yeah. I, I make I make a killer Manhattan. And speaking of old fashion, uh, I'm writing an article that's going that I'm publishing in near the end of November, first of December. You know, near the end of the year, and it's the my top five old fashions in DFW on West Side. In five different five different five different categories, you're gonna have your standard old fashioned, your smoked old fashioned, oh your God. barrel aged old fashioned, your unique recipe old fashioned. You know, so where they'll change the bitters, they'll change the garnishes, yeah. stuff like that, and then top overall. And what I'm about gonna, rye? What about rye? That so that that would depending upon how they do it. So some, some what, what category of, would a rye old fashioned fall into then? That typically is falling into your standard old fashioned because you okay. can either do a bourbon or bourbon or, or rye. Yeah. Okay. And I love me a rye. I, That's my and favorite. I've already I've already got I've already got the winner for the uh for the stand the overall standard old fashioned, Ooh. which is a rye. And I'm not gonna tell anybody who the name of where it's from, but I will say that it's somebody that we all know quite well. Okay. Can you say which rye it is? Uh, they went with this, just a standard uh, bullet ride, but it was just the, bullet. the, the, bullet. the very, the, and, and here's, here's the thing with, with old fashions and Manhattans and Boulevardiers, you know, and Sazeracs, you know, all of our classic cocktails, very easy recipes to do, but it's also very easy to just really mess it up if you don't yeah. balance those flavors out of it. That's what I, that's what I was looking for on it. But we we know we know the winner of 
the overall standard old fashioned. Nice. Congratulations when you find out. And my AirPods just completely died. I thought they were charging. Oh, uh, my mine died. My internet died. Um, when when I disappeared, I'm like, oh, oh, oh God, I hope the the cast hasn't finished. And I'm sitting there trying to get my internet going back on. The buttons that were still going when I came back. I'm not that high tech. No, no, no earbuds here. I just I'll just talk. <laughs> Blah. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what else we got here? Uh, oh. Oh, well, so uh, Joe keeps talking about this Italian orange. Yeah, I'm seeing that. San and, Pellegrino. Like San got, Pellegrino San, is yeah, solid. San Pellegrino, it's, got, it's got a lot of sugar in it, but it is it is kind of like a seltzer water, but flavored. It's, it's okay. a sparkling water, but it's flavored, but it's also very good. I do like okay. San Pellegrino. They come in cans. Um, they're, they're good. They have some other flavors as well, uh, but it's good. Gonna have gonna have to try that. Uh, rye Manhattan. I, I I love a rye Manhattan. Uh, love a, a rye Boulevardier. You know, rye just provides so much extra complexity to the drink. You know, to to the cocktail. I like the Woodford rye. I'm a wood. I have Bullet as well, but I'm uh, when it comes to rye, I, I I prefer the Woodford. I have a An rye Angel's Envy rye is really good. If you haven't had that, I have a chocolate. Rye. I have a chocolate malt rye from Manhattan or uh, from uh, from Woodford as well. It's also Ooh, that sounds good. That that sounds good. Very good. Yeah. If you haven't tried it, you find a bottle. It's really good. But believe it or not, when I'm at the airport to fly out to Tampa and you know sitting at the bar waiting for you know flight to come around and I can board. I tried the old fashioned first and it was just, it wasn't good because the bartender shook it instead of stirred it. So it was really watered down. And then, so I tried her Manhattan and it was one of the best Manhattans I've ever had. And it was what the Woodford, it was what the Woodford dry, but she just balanced those flavors out so perfectly. Old fashioned? No. And I talked with her about the old fashioned. She's like, why didn't you like this? It was because you shook it. It was watered down. But uh, the the Manhattan was was phenomenal. I'm a I'm a big Manhattan fan. Um, I think somebody's asking, "Am I going to come out with an LE cigar?" And I'm going to assume LE means law enforcement because that's what I mean it. <laughs> Limited, Limited edition. edition. LE. Oh, oh, okay. So I, I LE is also or Leo. Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Yeah. It, it, yeah. But I knew he meant limited edition. He's not so, a Leo. <laughs> so the so the so the JT Limitado is our limited edition now. And I will say that the Cigar Obsession line is our ultra premium boutique brand. So I do not make the same volume of cigars in that line, in that brand of cigars mm -hmm. that I do in everything else. So when you want to talk about limited, it doesn't say limited edition on it, but those are found in much smaller numbers and they're not found in all of the cigar shops that I sell my cigars in. We pick and choose because it's it's kind of one of those brands that is not going to sell well in shops that are big general and Altada shops, big box stores, right? right? It's one of those harder to find, ultra boutique. I put a lot of a lot of time. I wanted this to be my high end stick with regard to the bells and whistles. I use some seriously aged tobacco in these cigars, relative to. The standard that I use in my other ones, which is also aged, by the way, I use three to five year aged tobacco in all of my regular production lines. The um, CO lines are usually four and up. So Very they can nice. get six, seven, eight years out of some of these uh, tobaccos. And for that reason, they're more expensive, which is why the price point is a little bit higher because time is money. You got to remember, I mean, you got to let tobacco sit. I mean, for it's like wine, guys. You gotta yeah. let it sit, and you just you can you. There's only so much of it. Right? Yeah. And so when I forecast my production, we forecast I, what I'm. I'm gonna say I'm gonna make. They have to be growing it years in advance. So it, it's it's pretty challenging uh, when you're growing your own brand to be able to forecast enough material if it's unique. And some of the tobaccos I use are pretty unique from various countries that we purchase from, not just what we grow as a family. 
um, to be able to have it on hand and properly fermented and ready to use uh, that have age on it. And that's what makes a lot of the Placencia cigars, uh, and, and for that fact, other people uh, like A.J. Fernandez or, or Pepin. Yep. They are using tobaccos that they are sitting on for years before they use it. So it makes it a very unique um, uh, product that you can't rush. You just can't. And by the way, Cubans aren't doing that. No, mm -hmm. they have Cubans are trying to get it, get it, get them out, get them out the door. And, and you, you know how they're marketing. You know how they're marketing Cuban cigars right now in England. And it was unbelievable for me to even hear this, because if I did it, I'd be out of business. They were actually telling their retailers. I was on a board, um, one of these talk boards uh, with guys from uh, Light 'em Up. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and he's a, he's a great guy who runs that a very informative guy. Uh, he lives in Austria. And so they had a lot of the European retailers on talking about, uh, Cuban cigar prices and availability of Cuban cigars. Cause a lot of them sell Cuban cigars. It's part of their market, right? Market share. And they were talking about how they were being told that, when people buy a box of cigars that are Cuban cigars, that they're not supposed to smoke them, they're supposed to let them age for six months. You buy a box of cigars for 300 to 800 quid or pounds or, or euros, and you don't smoke it, it's not ready for six months. I would be out of business. <laughs> but, but those yeah. boxes are now over a thousand pounds. You see, now they're over a thousand pounds, but you got to let them sit because they're not ready to smoke because they're not fermenting them and aging them because after we roll a cigar we have to let it sit and let it dry because they're completely wet right because we have to we have to moisten all those tobaccos to get them pliable to roll to put in molds and to do all this other stuff and then we have to let them sit and get back to relative humidity of 70% 65 to 70% right and with that that comes the marrying of the tobaccos in the blending process so it's a it's it's a portion of the the product sausage making that you can't rush. You have to let that happen. And what they're doing is literally telling people, we're not doing that. We're putting them in the box. They're wet. So you got to let them sit and wait and smoke, but buy them now. I'd be out of business, Yeah. but it's accepted and, and people just keep buying them for exorbitant prices. So, and, and that, and, I'm, and that kind of brings up like another point that, you know, you can always tell like the aged tobacco of whenever you're smoking a cigar. Oh, and I sure. mean, if you, if you have that compared to something else and then it amazes me whenever I, people always say, I gifted you a cigar. You haven't smoked it yet. And usually I wait till it acclimates. And a lot of times if I've smoked it before and it's a really good one, I let it sit for a year or so before I do it because I know it's only going to get better yep. mm -hmm. a little time but then you also have that window where you can't let it get too too long so you have to have that happy marriage so what i tell people when they're buying cigars that they really like and they like know that this is a cigar that's a staple for them like this mm -hmm. is one of their wheelhouse for permanent i say if you really like that cigar buy two boxes right so you stick one to age it right and you don't touch it like what you're talking about. Right. Other box, the, the first or the second box, whichever one of those boxes that you're not aging, mm -hmm. you're smoking. Yeah. By the time, and this is the key, mm -hmm. by the time you're done smoking that box, which should be a year, right? Because yes. it's not always going to that cigar. It's in your right. rotation, right? Right. As long as you're going to that cigar and you smoke it throughout the year, 20 mm -hmm. in a box, by the time you're done with that box, you buy another one. And you put that away and take that one you've been aging. Yep. Uh -huh. And that's now your, now you have a rotation of a mm -hmm. one year age cigar at all times because you got one sitting and you got one smoking. Right. That And that's like right. real solid. That is really solid because I have my aging top door. And it's funny because um, my youngest, she's 14 and she's, a, she was a preemie, very, very preemie. And she, we celebrate national preemie day because of her. So she says, mom, it's national preemie day. That means you get a special cigar. So she goes to my deep aging humidor. She knows which one. 
and she will pick it out and it cracks she you can tell who her mother is because she holds it by the band she doesn't as we say finger fuck it she grabs it by the band she gently brings it down and she always manages to pick the best cigars and you know but she knows how to handle it and she knows which ones mama's age ones those are her the special occasion ones or the ones that you know something special happening so uh it, it's pretty funny and then it's kind of like when my son when he graduated from college and uh he smoked cigars as well and he came up and i said son you get to pick one from the aging humidor like the big thing he was like really the really nice ones and special ones because normally i'll just kind of give him the other ones you know but um it's really neat and that's something that i'm gonna say is something that has had that has really got to mean something special to you your dad and your family and all five generations for y'all to enjoy this in special bonding time for y'all oh yeah cigars are definitely a bonding time for us because it's not just a cigar it's a legacy and to us it means a lot more it's kind of like if you're in the wine industry for generations and hundreds of years mm -hmm that when you all pick up a glass of wine together and share it. Yeah. It's got there's be meaning behind just the, the actual yeah. product itself. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship with the past yeah. and the remembrance of what these other generations have gone through to get to where we're able to sit and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. See, there's a question about Eagle rare pairing with the above and beyond. I think yes, that would so be a, a nice pairing. Um, that, and it does sound good. That That's, that's Joe because he's doing a review of Above and Beyond for uh, Whiskey Network magazine for the December issue. Nice. Well, I'd be honored that it, uh, he, he did it with the Above and Beyond. Yes. Sure. Joe, Joe and I both write for the Whiskey Network magazine, and we're honored because he just got finished doing a review of our cigar with uh, Joseph Magnus uh, Cigar Blend for the uh, November issue. So tell me about your cigar because I don't know much about it. So it's uh, Noel Rojas did the blend for us. Ah, Noel Rojas. I should have known. <laughs> and it's a, it's, a, um, it's a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. And then of all course it is. Of yes. course. And then all, all Nicaraguan uh, binder and long fillers where the, mm -hmm. where the long, some of the long fillers is uh, from Jalapa and uh, Esterly and Ometempe. So you get some of the chocolatey notes, you get some of that nice deep ash peppery notes from the from the Ometempe region. A little mm -hmm. bit of earth, yeah, a little bit of yeah. earthiness from there too. It's it's a we're we're really pleased pleased with the blend and very happy. We're, we're hoping to part of what we want to do for twenty twenty three and into twenty twenty four is to partner up with a factory, whether it's Noel's or another factory um and come out with some more blends so we're going to do a a gray beard blend i'll throw my hat in the ring noel does some great work he does awesome. some, noel does some great work uh he loves and has a passion for what he does as well he's a good guy and uh if you're looking for something other than him i'm not trying to take any business from noel uh, but if you're looking for something other than him i'll throw my hat in the ring oh we, but, uh, we'll but he's he's we'll doing a great it. job with with his brands and and with his blending so mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys are in good hands. It's yeah. yeah, this one was really was a it was a like a white label type. Um our, our friends uh Jim and Raymond from Providencia. Jim, oh yeah, good people. Ray, yeah. Raymond contacted Red and I and said, Hey, I've got some extra blends from, from Noel. Do you want to put a put your label on it? Like, and so <laughs> we, we got to try a couple of them and we picked this one. And so this mm -hmm. is the one that's that that has Kind of representative of us, I think. You know, I think I think it's very much representative yeah. of, of of our our profiles and what we enjoy. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait to smoke it. I'd like to see what it is, what you guys, because that tells me a lot about what your palate is, mm -hmm. what you find to be exciting. I'd like that's one well, way of identifying what you're where you guys are at. And one cool thing is is like for us, it's about the pairing. You know, it's the whole sure. ambience of it. Sure, and um, we've paired it with coffee, IPAs, beers, bourbons, wines. Did I say scotches? I, I mean, I think scotches. we've tried to pair it with everything, and it's gone well with everything. So that's 
that's kind of like a challenge in itself is because sometimes absolutely stars aren't that's a lot of variety you. yeah it's a lot of variety it for is the same cigar to for be able to work cigar. with that's 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 very impressive that and, uh, and you that's, able that's, to get that's, that's what we look for in our cigars is is a cigar that will go good with versatile. multiple very versatile mm -hmm. multiple, multiple types of you know types of pairings I've, I've paired it with white wines and and red wines and blend mm -hmm. bordeaux paired it with a white bordeaux i've paired it with a dr pepper and have <laughs> yet to come across a a, a bad pairing with mm -hmm. good deal pepper. that's great yeah but what we what we encourage people is that if you come across with a bad pairing change the drink yeah change the drink just Go, just find something else to, to drink with it. Cleanse your palate out with some water and then don't change mm -hmm. the cigar because it's not necessarily the cigar. It's just that the flavors from both that aren't matching very right. well. So that, that's the whole definition of pairing, that it means to pair, not yep. one over the other. That's right. the problem. It's exactly. Being sim sympathetical or mm -hmm. symbiotic with right. the flavor profile. And, and a lot of people don't don't understand. As a, lot of, as a matter of fact, a lot of retailers miss that what, and, they, and what they generally they do is they say one or the other they, and they, well, they, they, like, they usually ask their their, their consumers or, or there's somebody in the humidor will say what do you like what are you looking to smoke mild medium or full body what's the taste profile you like and what's your budget that's usually the questions they ask yeah yeah they always forget by the way what, what are you going to have to drink it? with this mm -hmm. because that i mean you could give them all of those other fit the bill and then they go and they have the wrong drink with it, and it's garbage. And, awesome. and they tend to blame the cigar. They tend to blame the cigar, oh, they tend to blame the not cigar. the drink. And and I would even say I would even add the other question of what have you what have you had to eat? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, it's like wine. It's like wine. What are you having your meal? What have you already eaten? Depending on the nicotine level, if it's a higher nicotine level cigar with a lot of Lajaro in it, you need something that stands up to you just for your physiological aspect. You don't want to get green. <laughs> Because some, some cigars, even though we have residual nicotine, which is relatively low, there are some higher nicotine level cigars made by design mm -hmm. um, because you want that strength and you want that nicotine right. kick. But again, it doesn't last long with anybody. No, it doesn't. Now, by the way, if anybody ever gets sick from a cigar that is extremely strong with nicotine, do you guys know the secret? Chocolate. Yeah. Sugar, 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 which yeah. is, well, which is chocolate. Sugar, chocolate. Yeah. As long yeah, as you have you something have like a sugar cube, the best thing is that's... if you have a sugar cube. If yeah, you not, can do you chocolate know... as long as it's real sugar, right? right? As long as it's not like sugar free. The yeah. issue there is sugar because it displaces the nicotine molecules. Right. Similar, I hate to use this analogy, but it being the paramedic that I am, similar to Narcan with heroin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It displaces. The nicotine, yeah, and and the and the sugar will overwhelm mm -hmm. that that feeling of right. of green ill, um, sometimes nausea. Yeah, in fact, one of our viewers was like, "Oh, I had a cigar and I got green," and I was like, "Well, next time you do that, you know, grab like a, you know, sugar or a chocolate Hershey Hershey Kiss or even a peppermint or something," and um, he was like, eh, "No, I think it's because of this and this," and then he went on TikTok. And there was a gentleman that said, if you ever feel this way, do this. And he was like, wow, you are right. Well, if it's on TikTok, it must be true. Yeah, yeah, it must, it must be true. <laughs> Not the fact that I've done this for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, key, the key there is anything you eat, as long as it's got sugar in it, the sugar is what the issue is. And by the way, stop smoking immediately. That yeah. also helps. Don't keep smoking and popping, thinking I'll be okay. And they still, do you know how many people I see in the lounge? And you can tell they're green. It's like they just, and I'm like, and they're still puffing. And we're like, stop. We tell them, stop. Go get sugar off that table. But stop. And they still want to smoke. And I'm just like, I don't get it. Yep. I, I don't either. I, it's it's supposed to be a pleasant experience. Yeah. Sure, Not, sugar, any, any type of carb does does good too we i had we've got a friend and uh he you, you're familiar with the texas lancero oh it's yeah a, it's I'm a, familiar. It's 770 and and he smoked it in 30 minutes why 
because that's what Why? he does. He, he smoked it in 30 minutes. I mean, and I looked over at him and he's like about to pass out. I mean, he's so green. He's so, and I'm like, do I know this guy? No. Okay. no and, and I'm like, get up and go get some chicken. He's like, no, I'm fine. It's like, either you get up and go get some chicken or I'm going to go get some chicken. I'm going to shove it down your damn throat. I would have shoved it somewhere else. And so, <laughs> So he went and got himself some chicken and ate a couple of, you know, a couple of pieces of it, started building his system back up. And then he went to go get another one. I'm like, don't you get another one of those, those go with it. Glutton, glutton for punishment. Yes. Would that be a chooch? Is that how you say it? Chooch? That's a chooch right there. Chooch. He would be a chooch, what we call a chooch. Now there's different levels of chooch. Okay. So I've got to learn the chooch levels here. I'll give you one. Just okay. because this is the the grand poobah of the chooch. Okay. Okay. It, it's the chooch du jour. Chooch du jour. Yeah. So we're gonna Sounds we're gonna like mix. Sounds like here. Right. So we're gonna mix <laughs> we're gonna mix Italian with French. Okay. Right? Du jour is French. So right. that's of the day. He's the uh, chooch of the day. Of the day. <laughs> yeah. That's the chooch du jour. All right. All right, Joey G. That that's that's your new title. Chooch. Oh, I, I see him type. I see him typing chooch master. Yes. <laughs> we got to make it Italian, so it'll be Maestro de Chooch. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you got to make it sound classy, man. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so what, what would the what would the Texan version of that be? Oh, the Chuchador. What? No, like in Texas, we say when someone does something like that, it's bless your heart. When if, oh, if oh yeah, anyone from the South ever says. Oh, oh I know. Heart. And we make it sound so nice. And we, yeah. and you think that, oh, they're so sweet. And they're just like being so, no, we're not. We're, we're calling oh. you an idiot. That's our nice way or, of saying it. Or go F idiot. yourself. That's usually what I get out of yes. it. Yes. And, and bless your heart. <laughs> so, so the, the church master would be, would, oh, you're, you're just the blessed church. <laughs> there you go. The blessed, the blessed church. church. I'm sure Joe will come up with some good ones too. Talk to Joe. He's got he's been practicing these things for 15 years. I, I'm sure of it. Well, he 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 loves he loves it. And yeah. Then, then we can take him back. I rue the day. I rue the day I thought of that word. Oh my goodness! Now we've got <laughs> Texas Chuch uh, Arido. Chuchadillo. 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 Chuch oh, like armadillo. Like armadillo. Yes. Yeah. Chuchadillo. Yeah. That that be the American pronunciation. Of course, in Spanish it would be chuchadillo. Yeah. So yeah. See, I was going for the Spanish. I wasn't yeah. going Texan there. <laughs> yeah. See, I I, I need to. I'm, that that's on my that's on my list to learn to learn in 2023 is Spanish. Get it, man. You got to get it. Yeah. Listen, your entire state's going to be speaking Spanish in about 30 seconds. You better hurry up. You're behind uh -oh. the eight ball. And, and that's what my, that's what my dad was like. He goes, by the time your children are born, it's going to be all Spanish. He's like, so you need. Just, just so you know, to put a little bit of levity in this, this is reality. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people share his manufacturing side. Is that we actually have a worker shortage in Central America for the cigar industry. Wow. Because really? of our immigration policy. I mean, these are third world countries. And the jobs that we provide are good jobs relative to the rest of the economy. But how do you compare it to the American dream? Mm -hmm. So the least skilled laborers, which are the lowest paid in the entire operation, are the first ones out the door. Do you have any idea what those may be? I'm, I want to say something about probably gathering the leaves or... The, you care, know, the clearing barns? And yeah, the clearing. It's the it's the, it's the, in the farming. farming in the farming. Yeah, the it's the farming aspect. Mm -hmm. And the other one, my battery's getting low. I think. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, it's we're, we're we're about to wrap this up. It's it's the farming, and the biggest problem, box manufacturing. Oh. Really? Yeah. I mean, these guys cut wood, sand wood, glue wood, paint wood, cut wood, sand wood glue wood, paint wood. It's not high level skill. Right. Not, not, they're like Santa's elves. Mm -hmm. they, they really are. You go to a box factory, it's like a bunch of Santa's elves working on boxes. And it's an essential part of our business. 
Right. But but they're not the most skilled laborers. There is skill involved, but right. you'll see guys just sitting at a, a saw, a table saw, and just cutting one piece of wood for a side of a box all day. Wow. And so they're not the highest paid guys either. Mm -hmm. uh, and so some of these guys are the guys going, if I can make it to Texas, I get the American dream. And that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And so we have a worker shortage in all of Latin America with all of our all of our jobs. They're coming from the islands. They're coming from all over the world for that fact. But in particular, Nicaragua, I don't know if you're familiar, is the second poorest country yeah. in our hemisphere behind Haiti. By the way, there is no reason for that other than the political corruption. <laughs> Well, and that's what I of was going to say. It's more of the political corru corruption that y'all have there. Yeah. So that that's the problem. So the level of corruption is causing this. And so they see an opportunity that, and they're being told that if they can make it to the United States, they won't be turned away. And I, I can't tell you how many Nicaraguans that I know today that are suddenly in this country that I never would have thought would come. But they're here because they're like, I don't need a, I don't need a visa. I just, I'm in, you know, mm -hmm. I got to move the computer slightly so we can plug it in. There it is. Uh, and then, and then they get on a plane from Florida to go up to. They go everywhere. And, yeah. and some, and some of these States rightfully so because they're inheriting hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. And that, yeah. I mean, I, I feel for Texas and Arizona yeah. in particular. In mm -hmm. California, they're they're doing California's it California's getting but, it. Mm -hmm. But Texas, I mean, you guys in Arizona are the are it's, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know, this is some of those I hate talking too much politics because you yeah. always piss off fifty percent of the people. But it's just not a good thing for our country given the curtain certain circumstances that we live in, just coming out of a pandemic. Yep. The economy slowing. Uh, we just let what, three million people two million documented that we know of and a million that didn't we just let 3 million people in the country. What is that like? The second largest city in the country just came in over the past year. Mm -hmm. By the way, none of them are supposed to be working. Right? right? Right. So how are they supposed to live? Are they really not working? Or, or how are they working? How are they living? I mean, this is a catastrophic mm -hmm. trickle down effect uh, to, to our country that mm -hmm. affects us at our factories. Mm -hmm. and, and in our industries, and it's not just tobacco, by the way, guys. Yeah. It's all yeah. of the industry out there. Yeah. And, 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 and by far, it's an agrarian like economy. Thinking, like apples, bananas, fruit. I mean, that's yeah. what and, and then And then there's coffee. textiles. Coffee. There's a lot of textiles in Nicaragua. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. as, as good as any of the jobs that some of these people may have, they see that the American dream is told it's within your reach. Just make it here. And, and a lot of them, unfortunately, are taking the risk. Of course, the cartels are running everything. Yeah. And these people are paying thousands of dollars, which is like a life savings for them. For them. And a lot of them are unfortunately not getting here in one piece. Mm -hmm. Some of them you'll never hear of. Some of them are mm -hmm. being trafficked, yeah. especially the women mm -hmm. and the children. Yeah. And uh, for, for all the things that we do in that country, because we have a lot of things that we do, mm -hmm. the two most important things that we have as far as resources in our industry Number one is the people because it's all handmade. Right. Number two is the soil, the land. Mm -hmm. So we try to take care of them as much as we can. We have um, a children's daycare across the street from the oh, factory. Very uh, nice. Because the mothers are working. The fathers mm -hmm. are working. So we have them over there. We have a cantina in our factory. So we subsidize their meals for lunch. Oh, we nice. have a clinic that we offer health care because health care down there it can be challenging as well. So we offer that in-house in our factory. We also uh, support different things like um, uh, Catholic charities, like an orphanage, mm -hmm. uh, schools, wells, other things like that. Uh, so we do a lot to, to help the economy because the government is not existent in, in a lot of these cases with regard right. to uh, aid or help. Mm -hmm. um, and it's now, of course, they're given the golden ticket, so they think, and so they go mm -hmm. for it. And yeah. so it's very difficult. It's uh, it's difficult to see. It's difficult mm -hmm. to experience. And there's a lot of loss that we're not hearing here in the United States with these people. Yeah. Um, it's it's bad. It's a, it's a sad situation. It's, it's, sure. it's a hard thing to talk about. And you guys are on the front lines in Texas. Yeah. You know, especially in the southern part of Texas. So you guys, you you see all you see all the time how many people are drowning. 
you know, and that's oh, just yeah. the well, are lucky to make it to the river. Well, you know how many are not making it to the river? Or the coyotes that bring them over. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I have students where they've been brought over by, their families have been brought over by the coyotes. Um, and and the coyotes are time. the cartel. Yeah, the That's cartel. They, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you pay them the money. And then when they get here, they expect about 2000 more. And if they don't get that, they kill them. You or, know? or you have or you have problems or you have and this yeah. is where they indenture servant things and then they traffic mm-hmm. people. And they, it's just a, a very sick, dirty underbelly of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's not really being talked about. But I digress. I, I brought it up because there is a connection to our industry as well. Uh, right. And we now have a work shortage, which is why it's harder to come up with product in a more timely manner. Mm-hmm. It's part of the whole logistical operation. So, and and I guess I've never really thought about it on you all side because you know we're sitting there. And the thing that it's I it's all love handmade. About it, There's I, no machinery. We can't we can't yeah. mechanize this. No, no. And the thing that I've noticed is like a lot. Um, Adventure, you know, for example, they have one of their cigars that um, I smoked. Uh, a couple weeks and it's the green one and I can't remember what it's called but that's their like when you buy that cigar 100% goes back to the people in their factories like the children getting glasses it started off with glasses then it became yeah. school supplies then it became clothes and things like that and we all try to yeah. augment because we, we have to take care of the people that yeah. are helping us create our, our products mm-hmm. and and their their employees but as I mentioned you they become generational, you know, uh, when, uh, for example, our family's been there since the sixties. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, when the factory started, the guys working had mm-hmm. kids. Some of those kids ended up working in the factories and those kids had kids. And then they're, not, I mean, it's, it's generational. generational. It's generational. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't want everybody, not everybody needs, we want them to better themselves, which is why we provide um, educational benefits, which mm-hmm. the government um, it, it falls horribly on their face with education down there, not by accident, because mm-hmm. that's how you keep people docile, yeah. keep them uneducated. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're malleable, they're pliable. You can mm-hmm. manipulate them more because they'll believe a lot of the things that you say when they're, they're struggling to survive rather than live. It's just more as a survival than live. It's like, where's my next meal? Not how am I increasing my 401k or the vacation I'm going to take, or I want to get a nicer car or a bigger house. Right. No. It's, it's I got a the next day, the next day, they're sh- they're very short term oriented with their mm-hmm. futures because that's all they have. Right. So it's a it's a very sad um, a set of circumstances that mm-hmm. we know that nothing lasts forever. And we right. I personally I speak for myself. Mm-hmm. I hope that there are change uh, and change comes soon, kind of like what's yeah. going on in Cuba. Mm-hmm. It's a disaster. Yeah. And that's been for 60 years. Nicaragua is a, a blueprint of, of that at a younger age. Um, Venezuela is a blue, blueprint oh, yes. of that age. Mm-hmm. Colombia just elected somebody that is completely yeah. left. Bolivia is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are all banana republic dictators under the guise of socialism, and all they're trying right. to do is consolidate power, exactly. um, which you find a lot of in Africa. So this is a world problem. Um it's not just in Central America, South America, right. in our hair, in our hemisphere. It's worldwide. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I've done other things in my life, and I'm very politically oriented with regard to understanding things that go on in the different areas because I'm an international company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, it's uh, I was also a political science guy in in college. So for me, it's not just the U.S. political arena, which is a has its own challenging set. <laughs> That's another uh, night for another show. <laughs> yeah, but it's the world. and uh, yeah. But the biggest thing is the way we go in the United States, so goes the rest of the world. The rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately. Uh, you know, so if we're sucking it, they're sucking it harder. And, you know, it's a responsibility we have to be responsible for ourselves. And by trickle down, Everybody else is better off as well. Mm-hmm. So, so that's all I can say about that. Yes. So thank you so much yes. for joining us. We we had a variety of topics. I hope and- I was entertaining. Very much. <laughs> uh, very much.
very much so. And so, so much great, great information. Loved hearing about all of your blends and everything mm -hmm. that you've got that you've Thank got you. going on uh, right now and coming up. Um, we we posted about you know thank you for for the for the coupon code for all of our viewers that are out there those who can make it out to the to the uh, hearth please do mm -hmm. show these guys show show you so support you know everything that you guys are doing there uh, we want to support you and all that we can and do so thank we appreciate you. you that means a lot to us because although I'm the face that you see. There is a team, there is a platoon, a company, a battalion behind me, um, not just in my office and not just in the United States with my sales force, but those people I talked about at the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are, we are supplying and providing jobs and livelihoods for people all around the world. And uh, it is truly a family business, uh, a generational heritage family business, mm -hmm. an artisan business and manually done and it's it, it employs a lot of people and so uh we try to continue that even though we're under attack right now and the culture of the world with regard to smoking although they seem to love marijuana um i the it, it's just i can't even get into that because it's smoking if you're if you're getting smoking then how i don't i don't understand it it just doesn't two and two does not equal four there but yeah, that's that's a whole nother show <laughs> yeah but we but we work very hard at it and there is a team and so I thank you on behalf of all of us here at Team Blanco and Blanco family uh, for your support, for every time you pick up a Blanco cigar and enjoy it. I want you to know that it's all I do. I live, eat, breathe, and sleep uh, for your enjoyment, for your hobby and your pastime. So thank you for all of the support, and I hope you continue to enjoy Blanco cigars for more generations to come, not just me. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you guys coming on. Um, had some fantastic pairings on this. Learned a lot about your cigars. And uh, we'll let everybody know what we're doing next week um, and where, you know, which, which channel we will be on next week. So stay tuned for that. Until next, until next week, as we always say, explore the pairings. There's something for everyone. Have a good and night, y'all. Stay Bye. smoky. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. We'll see ya. Bye.